child in Valoran has heard the tale before about the cursed mummy boy who felt his heart no more. So sad and lorn, the helpless lad, Abumu was his name. He ventured out to find a friend and learn about his bane. Tantrum that he never could control.
Um, welcome, guys, to the Oceanic University Championships, where we are here in Sydney, Australia. We are. For the Grand Finals. It's a best of five between two very competitive, uh, or competitive com competing teams. They've obviously gone through so many different hurdles to try and get here. It started all the way back in April. Here we are, May 25th at the tail end, almost halfway through 2019. Can you believe that? It's flying. It is absolutely flying, and I'm sure these games will too. A best of five series is what we have on offer, and it hasn't been easy for these two teams to make it here today. The semi-finals proved a bit of a roadblock for both of them. Yeah, two two ones. Um, Monash losing in the semis. Monash ran the finals last year. I think Monash won it the year before as well. So um, I think that's the first year without Monash in the grand final for a while. Um, but yeah, very excited to see uh, Auckland take on UCID. Um, should be a good game. I think really for the viewers at home, especially if you're patriotic, you follow rugby, for example, you know, the All Blacks, the Wallabies, the, uh, the ANZ rivalry, obviously myself being a Kiwi and you being an Australian, I think there's going to be a little bit of rivalry on the desk you as reckon? well as in the viewership okay. and in the Twitch chat as well. So I'm sure Twitch is getting a little bit excited by this one, but it is a lot to play for right now. A chance to really represent that, you know, maybe when you're not studying, that that time spent elsewhere, perhaps on the rift, actually has been for good purpose. You know, mum, if you're watching, they're, they're doing you proud right now. Yeah, I mean, uh, it has purpose as long as there are other people who have the same purpose for you to compete against, you know? Mm, it's, it's a tough one, especially when, uh, you know, the Wi-Fi gets disconnected. You have to take your, uh, you know, your laptop or whatever you have to the uh, library at university. I've seen it happen time and time again. I myself am rather guilty of playing league when I should be studying. But uh, a best of five, as we've mentioned already, a situation where, as you say, the likes of Monash not making it here, a bit of an upset. Um, looking at some of the picks and bans coming into this one, a little bit rigid is what I'd like to say in terms of some of the picks and bans that I saw. They, they seem to sort of stick to a certain characteristic. We are an engaged team. We are a pick uh, yeah. or, a, or a poke team, right? Yep. And now that we're here in a final situation, obviously you're playing on LAN. This is maybe something new for a few of these players. Absolutely. Playing from the comfort of your home is always quite nice. Yeah. But when you're in a studio environment like this, here we are in the OPL studios where these pro league teams come in week in, week out. It's a very different environment. Yeah, yeah, this would be a big deal for these guys, um, for sure. A, a few of these names I do recognize um, as having played before, particularly Keru, played on Regicide um, maybe two years ago, I think. Um, but, I mean, for this whole Auckland team, they've come across from New Zealand. This is an international tournament for them. Yeah. Flown over to Australia to play. Um, they're playing in, uh, as I think we get to see some footage of them now, that is Keru, I believe. Um, but they've flown over from Auckland, so this would be a big deal for them. You know, it's not like... Um, for uh, for UCID, it's like, okay, they're still in Sydney. Yes, they're in the studios, and yes, that's cool, but it doesn't have the same glamour. You know what I mean? It doesn't have the same... It doesn't, doesn't feel the same as when you, uh, you know, headed to the airport with your team, oh, arriving with your mate, sharing a hotel room with, you know, your duo partner or whatever. You know what I mean? That, that has a very different feel to just playing at your uni low club or playing from home. I'm not sure where these guys play from, whether it's on campus or, or not, but... Um, no, it's an awesome experience playing on LAN and I'm very excited to see um, what these two teams can do and who ultimately will come away with it. I think Auckland for the first time in the finals, so be keen to see what, uh, what they can do. I'm sure you can uh, speak from experience as well when we talk about some teams being very proficient on LAN and others being very strong offline. Now we obviously have to see exactly how things come about when it goes into this very first game as the draft starts just like that. No messing about in this one. The best of five series is going to kick off straight away with Auckland getting that first ban, and they're going to go for the Nico. No fun for that one. Yeah, Nico, mostly mid nowadays, actually. I think with the recent patch change, AP Nico has come back into the four a little bit. Um, very annoying in lane, um, decent lane phase. Skirmishing is quite strong, especially once you hit six. Um, just some of those AP values are, su are, are super, super high. Of course, has a four second route as well, which is um, ultra annoying. Yeah, I mean, obviously, what else is annoying? But uh, Aurelia going out in the ban phase as well. Uh, someone else that can go toe to toe, split push potential, 1v1 dueling potential, and the ability to disarm and just really snowball the lane and get tempo. Yeah, yeah, Aurelia super strong. Jace also really oppressive in the lane phase. Um, Kaiser taken away by U of A. Kaiser, another really strong laner. Um, I think a lot of what this comes down to, what you find in. Um, in that sort of in that amateur level games is a lot of uh, target banning as yeah. opposed to really what's meta. Um, and I think that's the right thing to do. You know, people don't have time to master the constantly evolving pool of meta champs. Um, so I think uh, some, some good bans so far, nothing too surprising. Uh, for me, the, uh, 
the Auckland bot lane is the one to look out for. Kedu, former OPL player, um, MLG or Email, as um, is playing support in the OCS, um, and I think he's having a pretty good season so far. Plays for Gravitas, if I recall correctly. Um, so the, those two are the, the key players for me to look out for. Also on the um, the UCID side, Zarenas, as a long-time Twitch chat goblin, now finally having to play on stream. <laughs> so we'll see. <laughs> We'll see uh, whether can he can play without flaws. Yeah. And whether he, he gets through Twitch chat unscathed over the next three to five games. What's interesting here, Carbon, is, you know, leading into this one in the semi finals, Sydney was so, so strict on Rise was banned. Rise was banned every single time. They had a composition that was always looking to hard engage and they were removing as many tools that could sort of lock that down. You're talking about Kindred of Ultimate. You're talking about Rise for the hard engage of that, you know, party portal. Mm -hmm. Anything that could try and force that agenda. Rise lets, uh, is let through and Auckland seem to just have it locked into their head as well. They've always gone for a Kaiser or a Vayne ban. And then definitely in that first rotation, gone for the Ezreal. Just always looking for that early mid-game power spike. Yeah, well, Kedu is a monster uh, Ezreal player for one. Um, but more than that, especially in the first game of a series, Ezreal is just so safe, Yeah. but also has a lot of room for skill expression still. Like, if you're a really good Ezreal, you can still pump out super deeps. His lane phase is good, he takes the TP. His mid-game is not as good as some of the other ADs, but certainly once he finishes... Um, Muramana, and he finishes off that second item, Triforce or, or Gauntlet. Um, especially now with that AP build, he scales super well into the late game as well. So, uh, not surprising to see Ezreal picked up. Speaking of uh, late game power spikes, obviously Vayne, if it isn't banned away, opting to go for the LeBlanc ban. And the Vayne does get let through, and that gives him a very scary, well, trifecta so far with the Galio for the taunt, the ability to jump in when Jarvan goes for that Cataclysm, and just to give them peeling potential. Yeah, I mean, Galio is probably the best support in the game at the moment. Um, Vayne also, when Vayne is in the meta, you pick her all the time. Because she. Or, Vayne's one of those champions where you could always do something. Like, yeah. okay, yes, if you're super far behind, it's obviously difficult. But there's always, you, you always have, at least as the player, you always have hope that you're that guy, that you can pull that, that next play off. Um, so not surprising to see Vayne taken away. Vayne Galio, um, pretty strong at the moment. I mean, her kit basically accentuates that force, right? You know, you've got the tumble, you've got the silver bolts, you've got the ability to try and chase down those kills and really punish players out of position. Now, speaking of the bands that we do have from the side of University of Sydney, two support bands with both Bard and Brahm taken off. Double B, so no fun in the bottom lane for them, whereas the Riven and Vladimir are taken off, so a bit of a top lane priority for the Kiwis. Yeah, so... Um Email getting some target bans. Um, he played Braum, ah, uh, sorry, Bra <sighs> He played Bard to great effect I not two right days there. ago uh, in the OCS. Um, had an amazing game, monster Bard player. Mm -hmm. um, so not surprising to see that one taken off the board. Seems like, please don't pick that champion. Well, we got told that, you know, Yumi is allowed. This would be the first international game of Yumi, right? I this would be. No one's played it on stream. Okay, so disclaimer. As the analyst for this game, I don't understand what this champion does other than feed. So forgive me <laughs> if I have to learn on the job. I've been told by a certain someone that this is the ultimate AFK hero. Apparently More you, can or less. Actually, you can actually jump onto somebody and yeah. get flagged for being AFK. Not that you should be doing that in your games at home, but we don't endorse this at all. But I'm just letting it be known. All I know is that she can AFK on her teammate and that her ult, you can't get hit by three of the pulses. It's basically Sona ult on steroids. More or less, except not instant. No. I would say Sona ult's a lot better, but I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully, MLG can show us uh, exactly what Yumi does. Um, because I feel like if... I mean, if you're going to experiment in any game, it's going to be game one, right? For sure. Throw the cards out. See see what happens. If they win, then maybe next game, you see it have to ban Yumi. If they lose, well, it's only 0-1. they still got four more games to play with. You get to see what you can get away with, test out your opponent. And I mean, obviously, there's so many different aspects when it comes to LAN, especially not only you, you yourself, your own performance, the preparation you put into this one, the studying for the drafts and actually what compositions you want to focus on, but just the mentality of your opponent. Just small signs of disrespect during the game itself. Maybe you go for an aggressive invade when they weren't expecting it. Definitely in a high pressure uh, situation, things could go amiss. Aatrox. If you didn't catch it before, was the final lock in there for the University of Sydney, a pick which is causing all kinds of problems. Uh, a bit of a world ender. Okay, there we go. 
Just taking a little while to uh, <laughs> get all the champions in the right order. Auckland Worm, but uh, ready to load in now. I think, yeah, Aatrox, very strong top lane pick. Yin Yang just opting into the tank matchup. We've got Sejuani, Scion as that beefy front line. Then we have uh, short range Machine Gun Mage in Rise, and Kedu and MLG as the passive bot lane. Um, I'm curious. I really, uh, I'm curious to see what Yumi does at the highest level. Like, is there kill pressure? Is there not? She did take Ignite, so that tells me that there's something going on. Last I saw it, it was a uh, Kedu actually running cleanse, and we saw an Olaf uh, vein with teleport. Kedu's running cleanse. That's what I saw last before. Okay, well we'll see. Unless I've been deceived by the draft, we may be indeed. That would surprise me. Not a ton of stuff to cleanse, other than potentially Galio Taunt. Syndra was the counter pick into Rise. Syndra's pretty good into Rise. Rise short range champ. Syndra is able to punish that with a QE pretty easily. Also has huge combat advantage at level 6. Rise with a non-combat ult and Syndra with maybe one of the highest damage single target ults in the game. But Aftershock does make it pretty hard for uh, Syndra to get super... Uh, but never mind, he's taken Phase Rush, so... Gullet thrown by Emogen. We'll see whether or not uh, he gets punished for not taking the Aftershock. Well, it is indeed the cleanse. It That's the confirmation cleanse. on the screen. So okay, no TP on the Ezreal. What, what is he afraid of? Tended to see from the likes of Arise, but uh, no, they're going to swap things around. MLG with the heal ignite. No flash. No flash needed when you're not targetable, I suppose. That's actually an interesting point to bring up, the fact that, in, in a sense, I suppose you could try and draw a parallel to how Zoe operates and able to you know, utilize other people's uh, summoner spells, that the Yumi can just say, I'm that confident in my ability to stick around, find a partner. I don't even need Flash. Yeah, well, I mean, Ezreal has double mobility. Um, so if you can hop to the Ezreal and he can E you out or Flash you out or E Flash you out, then... No, I suppose there's no real need for you to flash. It's unlikely that you're going to use flash to engage. Her ult is long enough range that you can do that, I think, from the side or from a flank or from the back of a team fight where you don't need to flash forward like a Sona does. I think if you look for the bottom lane, I think the bottom execution really has to be on the side of uh, Sydney, looking to try and get that vein unlocked online. Try and get some pressure with the Jarvan down there to try and really accentuate what you mentioned before with the Galio. If it is going to be a very passive Yumi lane, then I think you're quite frustrating if you're just going to be taking poke from afar continuously. Yeah, I mean, um, Bane is one of those ones where, like, when you look at this lane, it's like, okay, yeah, Galio super aggressive, um, ton of kill pressure, heaps of CC, but ultimately, if they do nothing but farm for the next 15 minutes. Olaf is stoked. They're still fine as well. He's so happy. That's exactly what Vayne wants. I mean, it's nice to have a kill on Vayne, but uh, the nicest thing is just to have two items uninterrupted so you can ult and kill everyone. Stun misses. Imogen just paying respect in the mid lane. So you're trying to deny him some creeps. Imo has actually uh, placed a vision ward on the enemy blue, so he's scouting things out. Actually has drawn in uh, Zarenus to come about, give him some protection. Obviously mid lane is pretty even. He's even contemplating going for a bit of a dive, but I think that's more so just to catch out if he was trying to juggle with that vision as we turn our attention back to the bottom lane to sort of keep our eyes and get a bit of a summon a school lesson on how Yumi operates. Yeah. Pretty heads up play there. So um, Zarenus, as the stun does land. Big trade there for Zoot. Energen just popped the last of his pots. Oh, sorry, no, he has one left. Um, but pretty heads up play there from Zarenus to use his uh, lane priority to push into that blue buff area, allow Jarvan to get the steal. You can see now Elliptic on the other side of the map trying to make the trade, but it's just taking him so long. It's tough. Flash that's on. The flash, that's the taunt, that's the That'll damage, that's the ignite. Can they get themselves out? There's the heal as well. A lot of summoners having to be burned here by Yumi to try and make sure that she survives. But Vayne gets that first blood. That's what we were talking about. It doesn't necessarily need to happen. But boy, if it does, Olaf is one of the happiest oh. gamers on this rift. Absolutely. I mean, he's got that red buff. He has the TP as well. So he's not going to lose anything for cashing in that first blood. You could feel how badly Elliptic wanted to make that trade. Omo's in trouble here. Sindra is making her way over, but he's, uh, he's going to have to flash in a second. There we go. Flash goes out. 
sure chasing them to suit. Does have the knockback available. Q misses, catches that plant. A lot of action on the bot side of the river. First four minutes of this game. It looks so good, quite honestly, for the side of University of Auckland. The fact that they had bot lane pushed up so they could yep. freely rotate their bottom lane in. The yep. vision will dare. I suppose the biggest takeaway was the fact that the uh, blue buff diagroed. It actually yeah. completely reset. That gave time for both um, Vayne and Galio to come and reposition and just collapse and get that kill and just get the complete punishment for that first blood. Yeah, I mean, while they did have bot priority, um, they didn't want to leave their lane. It wasn't shoved all the way into tower yet. Um, Email tried to leave a little bit earlier, but uh, Usid were just happy to just bail altogether because they knew that wave was going to slow push into them anyway. So they just sat over at that blue buff and Elliptic not willing to take the loss. Unfortunately, um, loses twice as much. I think it's actually a bit of a scary moment right now if you're a University of Auckland fan because with this amount of pressure in the bot lane that uh, can sustain this red buff the and vein, the fact that you've got that first blood. You're going to be looking to try and uh, you know, keep the lane in a sort of pushed up situation like this for as long as you can with Jarvan keeping a presence there, looking for maybe an early Drake and just pushing that that tempo just deep, deep down. Yeah, I guess the one... Uh, Sunlands again, it's another big trade from Zoot. Emogen has um, been caught a few times trying to clear the wave out by these uh, Syndra stuns and they're only going to do more and more damage. He already doesn't have Flash. He got ganked by Jarvan while we were watching that Bot River fight, so... Bit of a scary spot for him right now. Yeah, no Open tier just yet, so... There it is. Not really scaling into that mid-game just they yet. Need to be the careful here, they across. don't have flashes. Oh. And... The punishment is there, this that's is maybe one. a second one here. They're looking for that double kill. Ezreal extremely happy with that effort, and well, honestly, it's a question a little bit of to what Kantos was really considering. Uh, you know, the taunt was getting charged up there, no flash in mind, no real obvious kill potential threat. And uh, what seemed like such a great early start for them, pretty much null and void. Yeah, a bit of stage nerves maybe. Um, Olaf still had a bunch of money in his back pocket. No flash on the Kentos. Like, he charged the stun. If he had flash, that's exactly the kind of charge I would be calling. Like, oh, he's going to flash in here. He's going to try and force something. But really, nothing doing. No opportunity there at all. And Vayne had at least 1,300 gold in her pocket. So, got to... Gonna put that one down to the land nerves. Uh, they cover to the land nerves. They get you every single time, no matter how many times you've been to land. I'm sure. Two zero on this uh, on this Ezreal now, and what was looking like a scary lane phase in a fed vein with a red buff. All of a sudden, Sheen tier is exactly the items you want to be coming back to lane with. Has the cleanse as well, so no real opportunity. Even if they land that Galio stun, it's highly unlikely that Kedu dies from this point out. Yeah, Ezreal in an extremely safe spot, not only, you know, Yumi scaling up as well, so Yumi's starting to add more with the bop and block, the ability to uh, zoom these members around and try and dissuade any aggression that could come from this bottom lane, and the poke is obviously the, the biggest takeaway from this. Not only are you able to stem the bleeding, push them from afar and prevent their all that engage, but just Olaf, he's going to get denied CS. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a really tough spot to be in now. Um, I mean, he does have that Vamp Scepter, so he can wait for the wave to come in and just life steal off the wave. It's unlikely that he will die in the short term, but uh, still no flash in either of these bot lane members, and Elliptic is cheating into this bot lane. He does have ultimate. But uh, one of the problems with Poke, so when you shove them all the way back to their tower, <laughs> it becomes rather hard to gank. Does indeed. The portal comes out. Rise nice and safe. Imogen not going to be too worried about that one. Does buy him some time as Omo was distracted there, allowing Kedu and Melg to carry on their free reign. Elliptic to Spider that did actually stick around, so potentially looking to set things up for an early Drake. Um, yeah. Drake definitely on the cards. Um, oh, big taunt. Cleanse out, though. That's the one. They're going to flash right in there. Someone is having to be burnt left, right, and center. Cleanse and heal. Coming on through, there's the ulti, there's the pulse, and there's the damage. Looking for a second, the stun, the death, it is done. Blue on the screen, and it is double kill, double time in this bottom lane. Yeah, that's exactly what we were talking about. Um, not having the flash. Well, I mean, I suppose the flashes came back up, but Kedu with the uh, with the cleanse there, that taunt was never going to do much, and turns it around. Very nice outplay there from the Auckland bot lane, and all of a sudden, 4-1. You can see none of the damage lands here. They are doing the right thing by trying to focus um, MLG, but 
Unfortunately, this Ezreal is just so strong. Still has the flash. There's one ult lands as well. Not much they could do there, you said, other than wait for that wave to come in. I mean, for the side of Elliptic, really, as well, the, the jungle had been farmed. There really wasn't much to do. But, you know, consider the idea of roaming to try and match what Jarvan was putting down in pressure. I don't know. Yeah, Zoran does feel the uh, the pain of a Scion. Yin Yang definitely uh, trying to beat things back. He's down in CS, a bit of a deficit, at least 20 and counting. So, good to see that his uh, trading potential is still intact. Omo makes his present felt in the mid lane again. This is the third or fourth time that he's ganked there already. Unfortunately, hasn't been able to land a kill, but does once again burn that Rise Flash, though. Helping out his mid laner as much as possible. If you're uh, a UCID fan, you're hoping that they can turn that Flash advantage into a gold advantage soon. Um, I think this next base will lead to a lost chapter for Syndra, so she'll have no problem sustaining the mana anymore. Able to just continually trade in the mid lane. and You can sort of see a trade top as well. Yin Yang, both, both players blowing the ult. Sort of what happens with uh, tank matchups. You burn all your spells, doesn't do a whole lot, you go back to farming. The gentleman's agreement of, uh, well, that looked good. That was a bit of mana used. Yep. But let's focus on uh, what's really at hand here, and that is the the gold for these items. Elliptic once again putting pressure in this bot lane. So, so very patient. There is no wall to catch out once this uh, cannon does go down. They may just be looking to try and take some plating off this turret. Elliptic hanging around again. His ultimate is back up. They know that there's no flash on the Galio, so... They do have one pretty clear objective. If they do choose to dive. A lot of pings going down. Kantos being caught in the river here. He doesn't have flash. Elliptic opts into not chasing. Because Syndra has cheated out of mid lane. Dragon got aggroed for a second there. I wonder whether that will inspire any of them to... Uh, Give that air drake a crack, but doesn't look that way. I know. Poking his head into the river. Sidwani ult is up. It's a lot of pressure onto J4. Forced to back away down to half, back to farming, back to power farming and that really. But this is allowing University of Auckland a fantastic opportunity to establish some map control. Gonna go for the scuttle. Give himself some vision on that cloud drake. And turn your attention back to the bottom lane where that turret oh. is just about to fall. A nice healthy gold lead will be achieved by this. And you know with the that's bounty insane. that's already um, starting to climb up here on Kedu, Azrael in a fantastic spot as you talk about Miramana being a power spike. He's definitely starting to find his own. Yeah, that is an absolutely insane uh, amount of gold for him to get uh, 11 minutes into the game. To have gotten all those platings essentially alone, jungler never really, I mean there, there was the gank, but Sejuani didn't stick around for the platings. For Ezreal to get all those platings on his own, well with uh, Sport obviously, but he uh, that gold lead, that 2k, 2.2k gold lead is almost entirely on this Israel, I think. Drake unlocked, the reset will begin, but the map is starting to open up from a macro sense. They're starting to establish a bit of um, a bit of pressure there, the University of Auckland. I sense almost, I don't want to say frustration, very early to especially 12 minutes in to say frustration, but the fact is, bot lane it started off so well, and now they've seeing where Hammer been out-traded, if you think about it, for one summoner spell and cleanse. Yeah, and I mean, this is what happens when you play against a really good bot lane and you give them uh, an advantage, you know. They essentially got 2v2 killed from a 1-0 up position, and that's um, not really conducive to winning a game of League. <laughs> no. Um, and, and now they found themselves in a really tough spot. The, uh, the Frozen Fist finished by Kedu. He's also got that pickaxe and the tear, so he's just going to continually poke these towers um, Olaf is TPing top. He does have the boar completed, so he does have a little bit of combat power, but the poke is just, uh, it's just never going to end. From no. this point to the end of the game, um, Kedu is just going to be peppering them with his Qs. The lane swap is there, so they can carry on getting this early gold and opening up the map. But I suppose the saving grace really for the side of University of Sydney is they did get that Rift Herald, so that's a massive objective when it comes to pushing down turrets. And if they can find a pick, which their composition is definitely designed to do, make that a 4v5, push a lane, and definitely even out those odds. For sure, for sure. Um, we're probably going to see a couple more platings fall here, which is going to be even more gold on the side of uh, University of Auckland. So, terrific early game out of them. Nothing too aggressive. They're just sort of playing the lanes, and uh, this bot lane is really just making it work. Every time I see that flash is available for the likes of Galio as well as Syndra, I start to think, what could we see take place? Ryze says... Uh, well, Imogen, you know, no, no flash again. What would it be? It feels like that graphic has been on complete status. It's just the same 
Always yeah. ready to come back online. He's been ganked over and over again, forced to use 24-7, but with that low mobility or that low range, for, for lack of a better term, uh, that was to be expected from the start. There's a, there's a massive issue here, though, for UCID, and that is they've invested almost all of their resources into mid, and all they have to show for it is a 26 CS lead, which is nothing to, um, to scoff at. You know, 26 CS is um, still about 400 gold or so, but at the same time, um, they really needed to kill or some mid lane platings or an XP advantage. Here we go. I see a skirmish here. Yeah. Shaman did have the control ward available to him. Sun's going to jump on in with that unbreakable. He does find himself between a rock and a hard place, charging straight into the wall with the headbutt. Forced to disengage. Bot lane is completely pushed out as well. Was actually feigning a recall back to base, but decides otherwise. Let's keep up that pressure. Right now, we're doing wonders in the top lane with Keru's Ezreal. Let's just try and draw as many resources away as possible. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the problem for uh, Yusid now is that this Sejuani is just so tanky. They're all so tanky. Like, they have stopwatches. Mid lane has his flash up again. Um, they don't want to come to this lane because the Ezreal is so strong. But at the same time, it's taken them so long to, to create any sort of meaningful lead anywhere else. Riptail does get dropped, though, so this okay. is a good move. Uh, this is what we discussed before in terms of it gives you so much potential. You see as the slam goes across, the turret falls almost instantaneously. That's going to help definitely with that gold deficit. But still, as you say, they're playing rather reactive rather than being proactive. Sort of just letting Kedu and um, ML just have their way with this map. Yeah, I mean, the one consequence of having um, the mid tower fall now is that Zoot's priority is going to be a little bit more meaningful. Uh, if he can now shove out this mid lane and then start moving up top lane, uh, top river towards top lane, um, that's going to put a lot of pressure on this bot lane and they're not going to be able to just take these towers for free anymore. Unfortunately, it looks like this tower might fall right now unless uh, Omo does something about it. We take a quick stop check of the uh, travel from mid to top. It's all empty, but all that's going to be the ultimate coming across right there, straight off from Imelga as they jump on in with the taunt on towards two. But Cantos just cannot seem to find anything from that. Olaf is like, well, I can't do too much. That's the portal from downtown looking to try and jump in, but no one comes about it in the end. A lot of cooldowns having to be burnt right there, Carbon, but nothing to really show for it. And quite honestly, I think if, all, if you're an Auckland fan, you're smiling. Oh, absolutely. Um, that was a fight that they very, very nearly looked like losing. That was a huge Galio ult. Um, Olaf wasn't really willing to commit to anything too heavy, which was probably the right move. He doesn't have the tier 2 boots yet, so he doesn't move particularly quick. But uh, if Zoot had landed a big stun or uh, a flash Q ult, something along those lines, he would definitely had the ability to, uh, to one-shot MLG. So I think, yeah, you said it would have had to be an outplay, but I think Auckland uh, very lucky to get away with the tower there. Back to farming, back to keeping these lanes in check. Not the most exciting game of League of Legends from a macro sense. It's um, definitely secure a lead. It's game number one. Let's not do anything too crazy. Yeah, we can experiment with some picks like the Yumi. But let's get a bit of a feel for things as to how Sydney do like to operate. Another dragon is there. That's uh, going to be the Mountain Drake this time. And well, from what we've seen so far, Carbon, with them going for these platings, going for these objectives, that just helps them even more. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They're going to start working on this mid-town now. I mean, platings are down. Um, yeah, you can see there how much damage that Zoot actually does. Um, and, and MLG is uh, four levels behind. So if he manages to find support anywhere, that is, and while she's targetable, of course, she will one-shot him. But uh, as long as they leave this bot lane alone, they're going to lose towers. Love bot lane. That's going to be the engage right there. Teleport is about to come on in as M uh, M Imogen is looking to try and force as much as she can. The unbreakable stop is going to come on through. pretty strong, though. Looking to try and make something happen here as Aatrox is taking a ton of damage. The Sejuani's flash comes out. Down. When would it not? Sejuani comes to the party from the lane. Oh, the ultimate oh, coming across. It will not do much. The flash getting absolutely interrupted. He's the ultimate. There it is not. Elliptic finds one. J4 with the flag and drag out. And Milk saying, what can I do? I'm not on top of a friend, but I'll try and cause some kind of chaos. Ezreal coming down from the lane as well. It's going to be a bit of a pincer maneuver here. Not really Waiting much that Vayne can do in that jungle, but they are going to get separated oh, and split, nice and that's just a kill. Yeah. Uh, still going, looking for the dive. Oh, that Q did so much damage. Um, that's probably going to be mid tower here if they, uh, if they choose to stick around for it. Big fight in the bottom lane. Almost looks so good for you, um, you Sid. Serenus with a 2v1, so close to killing Emogen, but again, he gets away 
with a spider skin of his teeth. Burning that flash. Burnt flash. Odd off cooldown <laughs> since it's been up. Yeah. Uh, and it's still not died. So, very consistent performance from him so far. We've noticed that uh, wherever Rise goes, Zoot joins. Looking to always try and match and say, look, if I am going to be the one that's uh, had all these resources pumped in for the first 15 minutes, then I'm going to try and get something to show for it. Because if you look at this minimap right now, it is red team. That is Sydney just consistently on lane stock check. Clear, clear, clear. Push these lanes back. Then decide, okay, what is our next play forward? Bit of a stalemate as uh, everybody either base or looks to base. Kedu. Oh. Cleanse saving him again there. I questioned the cleanse at the start of the game, but uh, sure. saved his life twice. The Hasn't ultimate the was getting, it was getting queued up. You, yeah. you saw it. I would have killed him. I would have killed him. This, uh, this Syndra is really the saving grace. Elliptic's looking for it. Throws <laughs> another X Smithy ult. My and uh, there's a TP coming. This is the time for Sydney to try and turn things around. The punishment is real. And talk about a shutdown. I think that's really an understatement. You can understand what he's trying to do. He's predicting the tumble, but he's chucking it out like a boomerang, and it just never really came back. No, and uh, you don't really want it to. You want it to hit its target and stay there. <laughs> um, another big miss from Elliptic, and, uh, and he gets punished for it. I mean, frankly, even if it hit, I'm not sure that they would have killed him. He queues over the wall, 1v1 into Vayne. As we see, another skirmish in the jungle. We do. Double lasers across the map. Golden surprises as Yin Yang looks to try and get amongst the fight himself. The taunt comes out very early on there from Kanto. Stuns, damage, jumping in. That's the Cataclysm for up there by Gallo. Boom! They go in for one and they go in for a second rise. This time, no flash, no time to survive. He has gone and out of the fight. Zoo is low. No ultimate this time as well. Flash has been burnt. Cleanse was available, but it's Kedu not necessarily so needed. And Kedu is single handedly carrying this team fight. He's got no pressure on him whatsoever. That's a wow. triple kill to his name. And the team just say goodbye, Sydney. That's the full five-man ace, the first of this game, the first of this best of five series, and the call right on your doorstep. Let's get Baron. Yeah, uh, I don't know if he missed a cue there, Kedu. He uh, was putting out a ton of damage. MLG as well, of course. Sort of forgot he existed because he was sitting behind him, but uh, <laughs> doing all the things that Yumi does. Really selling Yumi to the viewers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but a massive team fight there out of uh, Auckland. It almost looked good. Who you said, but um, not to be, unfortunately. And we get to see a replay here. He engaged, misses. See that turnaround, um, Yumi ult, and Ezreal comes in for the chunk. We can see everybody's moving towards this tri bush, but it's not a great place to fight, particularly when Vayne is in uh, is in the lane. It's to run across. You finally see that Syndra ult. You can see how much damage it does, but Kedu just ease over the wall, and from this point onwards, it's him, it's him just. Shooting fish in a barrel, firing those Qs off into the team fight, killing one after the other, and this is going to be Baron. And it's going to put Houston in a really tough position. Clean sweep there for the side. Immediately into the action Auckland. again. Omo's in trouble. But Omo is in trouble. Does spot a few teammates forced to get away. Oh, the ulti goes across, but it does whiff. But we're <laughs> going to see Sion <laughs> charge into the wall. Hey. He's angry at But Sejuani, third time lucky. This time can land it. Making up for the redemption, you can see Omo shaking his head, and I feel the same for him because, uh, you know, you whiff once, you whiff twice, but the definition of insanity, you're not going to do it that many more times. No, Omo uh, let out a quiet oh no there, I think. <laughs> I'm not sure what he was doing on the other side of the Dragon Pit. As we see in All In, Olaf trying to do his best. Emogen gets that phase rush proc, runs out. Condemn can cancel the ult here, he does. Chain goes out. Doesn't really find much value though. And Imogen is just kiting away. Got three members drawn to his uh, to his possession. Oh. Oh, the combo from Zoo doesn't land. The flash had to be used once again. But the fact is, that ball, so much time. Three members from Sydney committing. Mid lane is just completely open. And that Ezreal ult just cancelled two bases as well. So this is going to be uh, a free in here, here for um, University of Auckland. Probably would have been anyway, to be fair. But it's definitely free if you're not there to defend it. Sticking around, however, bot lane is still getting pushed upon. Nexus turret or uh, out of turret. Being quite low. Yeah, trouble here. Across from Yumi, dancing Don't across. Mind. That's the fact of you being able to jump here, left, right, and center. Two kills go across onto the board. That's all the invitation that Auckland will need to say. Thank you very much. Mid inhibitors. 
Will they go for the end? Three members dead on the side of Usid, and it looks like they will. Kedu taking the tower. Doesn't need to. Oh, that is a Kedu. big hit flash. Disgusting. Is he going to get paid the price by dying as well? Wow. He does not. This guy. So many heals. And in 24 minutes, University of Auckland wrap it up. That's, uh, I don't know, that ended really quick. I feel like one moment they had the Baron, and the next moment it was all over. Carbon, you talk about cats having nine lives. Yumi, was that the magic charm for Kedu? Because he was doing absolutely everything. And even in that last play, just never got punished. Completely yeah. flawless. Yeah, you know what? I, like, I, I think Kedu is just a really good player, and he's a really good Ezreal. Um, but definitely Yumi, I think, is having an impact. I can't tell what it is. I don't know if the viewers can tell what it is. <laughs> but she's doing something. I think it's a ban. I think it's banworthy. Next you game, so? I would get rid of it. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to play against that. It's a new champion. Your support might not know how to play it. You know, everyone knows roughly what it does, but you might not... It's not the same as... You know, you see a Braum, you see a Thresh. These are champions you've been playing against for years. Yeah. It's a very different feeling to playing against the brand new champ, even if you think it's bad or even if you think you can handle it. An interesting situation, though, going into game number one. A risk was taken by Auckland. Yep. It appears to paid have off. paid off. Mm -hmm. Bot lane chaos was looking good. Then it switched around. But a few interesting summoner choices really proved to be clutch, I'd say, especially with the likes of the cleanse. Yeah, I mean, cleanse is really good from ahead. Uh, I think them managing to pick up, not needing the TP for lane phase, I think mm. was huge. Normally, Ezreal takes TP because he wants to get those early bases in, get that tier, get back to lane. Um, it also helps deal with more oppressive lanes that he comes up against, better mm -hmm. laning champions. Um, but uh, didn't need to take the cleanse. One lane anyway. Got a double kill. Uh, you know, had both sums but up. They teleport. tried to engage again. It's like, what can you do in that position, you know? Not much, but a scratch your head and go to a 10-minute break because that's exactly what we're going to be doing. Coming up after this will be game number two of this Best of Five series. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you soon.
Campus Grand Final time here in Sydney, Australia, as we have the Oceanic University Championship underway. My name is Skimmy. I'm joined by my analysts today in Carbon as we break down the full action that is on display today. And Carbon, you've already self-proclaimed yourself as a Yumi expert. <laughs> what did you take away from game number one of a hero that you thought, well, it did so much, but at the same time, I don't really know. You're kind of putting me on blast here as an analyst. Uh, look, I feel like she's doing a lot, but we just can't tell, or I just can't tell. Um, if I'm uh, if I'm Usid, who uh, have elected red side again, um, I'm definitely banning it. I think you just don't want to bother with champions yeah. that you don't understand. That. And I'm not saying that because I don't understand, they don't understand. They're much better players than I am, so I'm sure they understand. But at the same time, it's just it's a new champ, it's a finals. It was game one, okay. They obviously had something up their sleeves. Let's get rid of it. Let's try and reset. Let's try and get a standard game. That's definitely where my point was going because as much as putting you on blast would be fun, we don't want to embarrass you too much because we've still got more games to go through today. So Yumi potentially being banned out in this next series, something to consider. But something I want to note was the fact that Auckland was so, so strict in that Vayne gets banned every mm. single time in the first rotation. They let the Vayne through. They said, look, we can deal with it. That wasn't really a problem. So we talk about the Yumi potentially being a takeaway ban. Now they're thinking, well, what do we actually learn from game number one? Well, we got the win, first of all, which is always nice in that scorecard, one point closer to becoming the champions. But hey, these are some, I don't want to say cracks, but some small little insights into what we can try and get away with. And maybe a, uh, I'd, I'd like to see a big change, a big adaptation coming into pick and ban phase number two. Yeah, I mean, if you're, um, I, I suspect that we won't. I suspect that we'll more or less see the same thing. Because if you're U of A, you're more than happy to play blue side again. You've just won very quickly, very convincingly. So they're going to do the exact same draft. Um, the really, really, the adaptation Has that we should Sydney. see will come from um, UCID. But at the same time, it's only really one champion you change, right? Because you're not going to go out of your way to ban Sai on top. Not going to go out of your way to ban Sejuani. Ezreal, yep, I can see that. Yeah. Um, for me, the real one is is this support, but we'll see. Is it coming? See that Kaiser ban again. So now there's a bit of adaptation on the side of Auckland. Okay, they got rid of AD. Do we ban that vein? Do we not? What else can you play, Kedu? Um, well, seeing from what he's played coming into this tournament, he's at a high priority on the likes of Jinx, another hero that can almost go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the likes of a uh, of a vein in terms of that late game potential. You talk about what other adaptations we're going to see. It is going to be that Syndra band. So they are going to say as much as that was, um, I, I want to say in loose brackets, a non-factor, there were definitely very scary moments. Yeah. I mean, in the end, Syndra didn't do a whole lot. Um, I think she altered once that entire game that I saw. Um, but at the same time, Zook did have a very strong lane phase. Omo obviously putting a lot of focus into that mid lane as well. So they're just trying to get them off comfort a bit, I guess, I suppose. It, the Rise hasn't been banned, so Emogen can go ahead and take away that Rise again. Now with one less counter pick to worry about. Let's see what Zoot has up his sleeve. Organa, banned away. So we see the Zaya hovered and then locked. Wonder whether we'll see the Rakan straight away or there it is. We're just going to see it straight away. Bot lane locked in. It's interesting because, typically speaking, when they have had the second rotation, they've been very, very flexible in terms of what they want to opt for. You're looking at Galio, as we saw beforehand, but if it hasn't been the Galio, they were looking at the likes of a Hecarim with a high priority if mm. J4 wasn't available as well. Now, J4, for the most part, did find some value, was a fair bit influential, but not as much as you'd like to be, and especially given the amount of resources for the first early game part uh, in mid lane. Yeah, so uh, Sayra Khan, very strong. They can be aggressive. They can also be very defensive. And that's one of the things that I like about them so much is, yes, Zaya scales, scales well. Yes, Rakan has that deadly, not so instant engage anymore. But that extra E dash range on Rakan, I think is super useful for him being able to play a little bit more aggressively with vision. Um, and it also means that uh, with the double attack speed buff, they got a little bit extra power in that 2v2 as well. It's the Hecarim that we've uh, seen them play time and time again. A hero that just gives them so much just kill potential and, uh, and threat from afar. Much like a Ramus with a speeding up ball, yeah. boosting into lane and saying, well, if you're not ready, you have to be right here, right now. And Imogen, confident despite a few missed ultimates, saying, oh, I'll play it again. 
Yeah, yeah, we see another Sejuani. Look, you can put that first one down to a warm-up. Maybe jet lag. First game of the day. First oh. game of the day. The jet lag, yeah. Obviously, you know, it's a massive three-hour flight from New Zealand. You know, yes. I had to do it myself this morning. Yep. And, time uh, difference. The time difference, man. Two really hours. It's it's, it's a long one. Like, I'm, you know, I'm texting my family. They're in bed already sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough. Uh, Hecarim Super Duper OP with Conqueror. Very annoying champion. He heals for so much, but also lives forever. This is interesting. I was actually going to discuss this before. The fact that you've gone from Mr. Rakan Zaya bottom lane, we know that he loves to play um, the... Uh, sorry. We know that they love to play the Ezreal. If yep. that's not available, it's gone for the Jinx. If Jinx doesn't seem desirable, it's been Sivir. Well, if you've got a combination like this that is looking to try and get in your face, Sivir Spell Shield, yeah. Find some value. The ultimate to try and run away from the Hecarim full on engage, yeah. I'm just seeing so much choke in terms of the AD carries that is yep. looking to try and force him down that one narrow direction. Yep, so um, pretty smart drafting, sort of drafting 101 out of uh, UCID, picking their AD. Enemy team doesn't Ooh. pick their AD, so they pinch that AD champ pool. But uh, unfortunately for them, Kedu is pretty good at the Draven. Oh, I thought he locked it in. That's weird. Mm. Oh, well, I think he'll pick it anyway. Draven. Jinx, pretty scary team to pick Jinx into. Yep. Um, Lucian, yeah, I could see that too. Draven is scary for the same logic that uh, Jinx is scary. Rakan, Hecarim, Oriana, and you've got no mobility. 100%. That was my fault the whole time as well. The fact is, if you've got Kedu here on a hero that he was able to uh, do so much in the early game, well, who better than a Lucian to basically say yep. that is going to be our game plan once again, and how can we push that envelope even further forward? What are they going to go in here? as that fifth and final pick to round Yasuo. out this composition. Yes, whoa. Looking to try and disrupt things with the uh, the wins from afar. Yeah, we've got uh, Flex in mid and top at the moment. Rise Yas can go to either lane. Um, it would be interesting to see what the last pick is here from Yusid. This is, my suspicion is that Yas will go top. I don't think that Yasuo uh, Oriana is a great lane. Jace as the counter pick. Oh, hang on. Well, last champ select, it took um, took Auckland like until the 20 second mark, which is the last m second that you can switch champions at anymore. And until the very last second, they were still swapping. So we'll see where the Yasuo goes. Yasuo went to Ori would surprise me. It's currently hovering exhaust. Rise into Jace. I mean, that Jay, neither of these matchups are great for Yas, but I feel like Jace may be easier. Excuse me. I feel like Jace is maybe easier, but uh, no, that's uh, that's it then. Emogen taking the Yasuo into the mid lane against Oriana. An interesting decision. We'll see whether it pays off. I locked it in. Hang that's. Uh... Can I get a WTF two Jaces in the chat? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on there? Moby Boots. Blind pick? Moby Boots. They're on point right here. I think if we talk about uh, University of Sydney, just their ability to engage, they have speed on lockdown. If they want to force a fight, there is no chance for you to reliably run away. Yes, you can maybe block a few skill shots. Yes, you can try and use some portals to get yourself out. But if you can burn those cooldowns nice and early, then hey, situations may suddenly become a little bit grave. Yeah, uh, both teams running solo frontline, but uh, you see it with the Hecarim. He's only an off tank, not a true tank like Sejuani is. Yasuo can be sort of tanky. He gets its uh, Phantom Dancer and the Wind Wall, of course. But um, I don't know, we'll have to see. I feel like this is one of those games where whoever gets ahead early is going to very quickly run over the enemy team. You Sid rampaging their way into the bottom river. Let's see what they've got cooked up for us here. Creative level one. They spot two people. Topside river. Kantos has W'd over the wall. ML has no idea that he's in there, but... That's going to be first blood. That is first blood. That was two summoners for one. Flash and Ignite from the bottom lane. Sydney will take that. And it feels a little bit deja vu from what we saw in game number one. You yeah. find an early advantage. Hey, we got a kill. I've got gold. I can do things in this bottom lane now. Yep. It's a case of discipline, it feels like, now for me, though, Carbon. Yeah, I mean, uh, Olaf has got that first blood again. This time, at least he's based to spend the gold. So he's going to come to lane with an extra long sword. 
That is going to be relevant. But uh, no flash on MLG. No flash on Olaf. Wouldn't be surprised to see one of these junglers show their face in the bottom lane pretty early here. 500 gold lead already. Yeah, definitely agree with your uh, fault pattern right there. Fact is, Kedu does have everything available to him. Wasn't a part of those shenanigans whatsoever, so expect to see him poke and uh, and farm from afar, get himself uh, into the mix of things, but definitely try to keep aware as to where these junglers are, and you can expect to see Elliptic from the tail end of last game was definitely putting a lot of resources into this bottom lane. Same hero, same style, maybe the same game plan too. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely the smart thing to do. Once you have a lane with a lead, especially an organic lead, you don't want to... You don't want to waste any time going anywhere else. You, like, why would you, you know? Kedu has shown that um, he can take the tower 2v2. You know, he can poke. Oh, nice bar cue. Um, he can poke. He can make that land. Oh, another. Loving the trading so far. Both teams landing their CC. Trading a bit of health. One pot burned on the side of uh, University of Auckland. Another Q thrown, but nothing doing there for the bard. Definitely forcing the agenda. Hecarim able to freely roam into the enemy blue, but there is a ward, I believe, able to spot things out. Now, despite the fact that Jace has pushed and rise with a matchup that we've questioned, but definitely should uh, slightly edge in favor of the Jace, Hecarim is able to go for this one. But Elliptic this does crazy. know what is up. The problem is, though, both mid and top lane are both pushed is in for Auckland. Is he going to turn for it? Who got it? Elliptic got the blue, so Omo's in trouble here. He has no flash. Uh-oh. But Zarinus first to leave lane. Yasuo also stuck at mid. Means they're going to let him get away. We got pretty much the exact same opening from game one to two. It literally feels first like blood that. to bot lane. Omo invades early into that top blue buff area. But this time... Not the minimap though. Hecram's on a mission. We've had a very different outcome. All that dodges the bard's done there. May just be going to go for that scuttle. Get themselves some vision on this bottom lane to try and establish and nice accentuate route. what they have so far. But Kedu, with the fact that Emelgo is just very susceptible about this flash, he's taking trades, but they're not always being desirable. Yeah, I mean, uh, MLG very quickly run out of mana here. Um, Chimes, of course, do give you some mana back, and he also, actually, no, he doesn't have the coin, so he be entirely reliant on the, uh, the mana regen here to um, stay relevant in this lane. A slow, painful death, like watching paint Indeed. dry. Elliptic shows his face in the top side. I think it's the first top lane gank we've had so oh, far. series. Yeah. yeah. Definitely no uh, love lost there when we've seen tanks juke it out for the Farmville simulator. But bottom lane, however, Kedu's in a lot of trouble. They're going to go for the oh. flash on forward, and Kantos jumps in. He bounces himself back. One, one in that bottom lane. Now, two kills to the name. Definitely that 10 minute break has done him a wonder. Yeah. Um, big difference between game one and two here. They get that first blood again, but this time uh, they make it stick. They make it count for something, and that's a big wave that Kedu's going to miss out on. Olaf looking for a plating here. I think he's going to get one, but what's that going to mean for his base timing? Email is. Uh, it's going to disrupt things. Yeah. Elliptic is on the hunt. I don't think. Yeah. Olaf still has the heal tough position for them to uh, force anything. 1.5k is the gold lead for you, Sid. Not really much to stock check on the map right now. It's going to be Yin Yang looking to try and keep this uh, locked in place, frozen by his turret, looking to try and stay the course, hit level 6, utilize that teleport as well as that portal that he has available to cause some map chaos. That was what arguably was the strength of Auckland, which is their macro pressure, their ability to cycle things out. Hey, if we're not going to win lane, let's just farm. Let's just go even. Let's look to try and think of the bigger picture. Portal in the mid lane. Suit has flash. Forced to burn it. Kantos is here as well. Kantos is looking Suit for something. Suit has alt. Leptic. Doesn't have ulti, however. One too many people in the mid lane for Zoot to consider playing ag aggressive. So he decides to back out Omo once again in this top blue side jungle. Trying to take away as many camps as he can. Working towards that level 6. 
level four at the moment, but that Gromp will help him ding five. So I think these two junglers are about to meet in the topside river. Yeah, they may just be about to cross over past. Oh, flash forward from Olaf, there. though. Kedu's in a lot of trouble right now. He doesn't have flash available to him, only heal, but he's not going to be able to do much in that situation. Top lane, the Chaos takes place as well as Omo is looking to dive on deep turret tank oh, once, no. tank twice, a no. third time with the heal. It's not going to be enough, but he gets denied, and that Ooh, stings. Nice. Yeah, that that's stings exactly what you're so looking much. for, is, uh, University of Sydney to get that execute. I really wasn't sure. I thought, is it worth trading a kill here to the rise? But, uh... If you're not trading, then it's definitely worth. Rise was fearing for his life so much, didn't even press a button. No, well, um, he doesn't have those fast flash fingers like Emogen had last game. Siasuo is ahead in CS, despite the range disadvantage. So a good lane phase from him so far. 2-0-1 for Olaf. Has the hammer and a pickaxe. He's going to do big DPS once he gets back to lane. Poor Kedu, only with that Vamp Scepter. Did you get the cannon? Nice. I suppose the concern for me right now, though, Carbon, is the fact that Kedu is so dominant in game number one, with a hero so mobile, so strong, and um, unlocked to be strong in a second here, I think. He's in a situation where he's so far Ooh. behind, and that hero will not scale very well going into the late game, especially with the range that he has. Looking to try and do stuff against the likes of a Jason or Oriana is never going to be a fun time. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. He is short range. I mean, he does have the culling and the dash. I think that's why they took the Lucian in the end. The mobility over, factor, uh, absolutely. Yeah, because anything with low mobility was going to have a really tough time against this Hecarim Rakan combo. Um, yeah, Jinx and Draven was maybe desirable. The lack of mobility was, yeah. yeah. And I also understand when you're playing against, when you're, you know, if you're Kedu and you are a player of high caliber and you are, you, you, you know, you know that you're better than your opponent. Playing a high mobility champion um, allows you to express your skill um, in an easier way. You know, you have the opportunity to play aggro and play defensive without fearing the unavoidable CC. Um, so I definitely understand why they opted into the uh, into Lucian there. Hold on, though. I remember with red buff is going to go down for the camp. There is a. Control ward there. Elliptic with the lane gank. Elliptic has rocket up. Oh. The flash from Zorin, but it's not going to actually get anywhere. But quite <laughs> thankfully for him, I'm sure Elliptic's ult does not claim the death as the Hecarim charge comes across looking for one. That's clean. It's a big and culling, that's though. cut. That culling is doing whatever it can. As Omo drops on down, he's down to at least sub. Flash two is about to come bars. up. Flash is there. He does have a red pinging. buff. If Kedu can get this, he's saying, yes, whoa, please. Fortunately, Pinging doesn't do any damage, and he's Omo looking for another Execute here. And he's done it again. You can see him laughing in the player cam. <laughs> Genius. The master of denial. Extremely unfortunate that uh, Kedu doesn't pick up. He wanted that kill so badly. He had uh, Omo had the red buff. He had some desperately needed gold. Kedu looking for that Cutlass at least. Already completed Essence Reaver for uh, Olaf on the Zyre, and Spotlight's about to get out of hand. It hurts. It really does hurt, but all going to look to try and uh, turn the tide of things, at least from a objective standpoint. Going to go for the Infernal Drake. Kantos may have something to say about that as the members of Sydney look Flash to try and collapse. He jumps oh, on in as a double. Looking to try and go for the ultimate of the Oriana as well, but the pool is there, and they come across as well saying hello. Is the ultimate Jason. Ghost from burned by Omo. Going to be used. Doesn't decide to pursue under the tower. That was a huge Ori ult, but unfortunately the uh, the wall prevented any further damage. And I mean, you take that fire, Drake. There's not much going your way this game for uh, Auckland, but you'll take an Infernal. A little bit of extra damage. God knows they don't have the gold for it. Yep, down 3k exactly at this stage. Bottom lane is going to be the focus, looking to secure the damage on this one. Turret platings are going to be the goal. And there is literally nothing that Kedu can do. Yes, he could potentially culling when it comes back up, but that's the thing, it isn't. Yeah, all platings now collected to the side of uh, Yusid, but first tower gold also going to go over to the red side, and that's a hefty gold lead very early into the game. It, this game is almost the exact... Mirror Opposite. of what we saw last game. Serena's meanwhile all inning. 
Imogen finding a nice kill in the mid lane there, looking to try and get some pressure on this map, some form of victory to even out the scale, saying, well, if bot lane isn't our go-to, if that's not where we're going to be turning our attention to look to try and find that miracle play, that one one player in you know shining armor, for lack of a better analogy, then Imogen, it's your time to shine on an area that many people in the community, bar maybe Teemo, love and hate. Yes, well, very polarizing, for sure. I think he's fun for the man who plays him, a woman, but not so fun for everybody else. If you're losing to Yas, if you're Winning with Yas, it's all a bit. Either he's winning and you're not doing anything, he's just carrying you, or you're losing and there's nothing you can do because he's flying all over the place, or he's on your team and you're losing and it's just some guys playing it for the first time, having a bit of fun. Yas was a sure sign of a ruined game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe that just went full circle. This got pretty dramatic. deep really quickly. <laughs> That's a bit dramatic, perhaps. Yeah, that poke is just... Uh, you can't stand and deliver anymore against um, against this Zaya. She just does too much. Life still does mean he'll be able to stick around this lane for a little bit longer, though. Yep, those uh, feathers were definitely being barraged. I'm definitely zoning away the likes of Kedu, who's forced to respond here. And say, so, well, you did it to us last game. Time to meet your maker. 5 2 1 on the scoreboard, as you mentioned. Here. Free They're waiting. Lead. They're waiting. Oh, they he gets caught. This one. They jump on in. Ah. They absolutely delete Lucian. No question about it. Amazing. Uh, I really didn't think that he would take the bait there. I thought they checked the bush a few times. They knew that there was nothing going on, that uh, there was something going on, rather. You know, where else would they be? But uh, mid Zoot lane gets stunned. Locked in place. Nice the forwards. flash forward. The exhaust going out as well. Very good there from Imogen, but the response from Omer is coming on through as the horse charge goes <laughs> in. He just slams! And Imogen falls to the floor like nothing ever happened. He's got trampled. Olaf flashing forwards. Picks up another kill. That's 5 0 for this Zaya now. He's going to get a blue buff for herself. This is um, as if Essence Reaver wasn't enough mana. She's going to grab that blue. She's going to grab. Yet another kill. She's got to be close to her first zeal item now. And it's gold lead. Is it 5k almost? It's just ballooning. Yeah. It's uh, getting out of hand rather quickly. And we're sub 15 minutes. That's the scary thing to keep into consideration right now is University of Auckland are on full damage control. What can we do to try and get ourselves at least some way back in? We're getting picked apart in the solo lanes. And losing when it comes to vision control. And now the Rift Herald is going to be picked up here from Sydney as well. Unless Elliptic has something else to say about it. He won the smite last time. Oh, it's in smite range. You're kidding. <laughs> He's done it again. This guy, he may not land his ultimates, but boy, can he land his smites as Olaf jumps into the fight and says goodbye to Imogen. How about a double kill? Sydney say what's up. Sydney say hello. We're not jet lagged. This is our territory. But maybe Yin Yan says don't get too full of yourself. Zarina's very keen to make his presence felt this game. Didn't get to do all that much last game. Not really doing all that much this game either and unfortunately gets punished for an uh, overzealous flash. But really that's the uh, only low light other than perhaps losing that Rift Herald um, from that because uh, that was another huge team fight win for Usid and um, I mean gold lead still 5k but another kill. Rapid fire cannon now on the Zaya. Kantos and Olaf 180 performance from uh, from last game and really stamping stamping themselves on uh, on game two in this uh, best of five. Definitely turned up a level. Maybe you no know, game number one bit of nerves as we mentioned before. For many of these players, their very yep. first LAN experience, an international experience at that, and it means so much, especially in a game you play all the time. Rift Herald okay. is going to be activated. Sichuani looking to pop that in mid lane now. So they're heralding mid and then. Moving towards Sejuani, all comes oh, out. Oriana. It's all though. one big bait. Oriana onto two. Looking to try and split their attention. Left and right they go. Rakan jumps in. He jumps out again. Bob with the interrupt. But Hikarin with the charge from downtown. Onto three. The fight is just going all over the show right now, Carbon. And not to mention, you've still got the Rift Herald doing things, acting as a six member for these Kiwi lads. But one member does fall amongst all of it. It was the Hecarim. They don't pick up the turret. It does end up falling over with one sneeze and one shot to the face. But it uh, doesn't matter about gold leads. The Chaos is still there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I really like the macro play. You drop that Herald in the mid lane and move over to the drag. 
You said move forward to try and clear that Herald out before moving to Dragon, but unfortunately no flash on uh, on the Jace means he cops the Sejuani ult to the face and gets one shot that Yasuo wall. MVP for sure there, as well as Olaf wasn't able to uh, auto attack. He rooted both Lucian and Yasuo, but wasn't able to hit them with any autos, so huge Yasuo wall as well. It definitely felt like a sign of, I want to say, calculated desperation, and I'll clarify it in the sense that, you know, you put down that Rift Herald, you're looking to deliberately try and split the members of Sydney and say, who takes the bait? Who's going to come on in? And they went left, they went right, they found CC, and they found the punishment. Now Sydney feel a little bit threatened by this one, and the damage that Orkwon have is incredible. That's the second Infernal to their name, second stack acquired by the team. And, you know, we said, you know, when you're behind on gold, these things do make an impact. Yeah, absolutely. That's uh, that's two fires. That's 12% bonus damage. It's nothing to uh, shake your fist at. They saw Zion in the elliptic. mid lane. Oh, an elliptic just do it. just caught a glimpse. Please don't. Of someone walking in the bush. They know that they are there for sure. There's a bar. Oh, what no is the timing? Way. The counter synergy. If they win this team fight, still, however. It is the ultimate disrespect as Yasu flies up into the air like one of your favorite anime characters and he dies a god's death. <laughs> because Zaya says, look, I'm 7-0. and I'm still fed, just by the way. Just BT dubs. Just by the way. They uh, they got caught crawling into that bush. It was a nice idea, but unfortunately, uh, Elliptic just caught scent. A part of me died a little bit seeing that overlap. Yeah, that was uh, that was sad for sure. That was an amazing bra ult, uh, bard ult rather. And you're dead. <laughs> Adding salt to the wound, a rise auto attack. A single attack. rise auto as you walk away. Fade away kill. It's definitely one of the worst ways to die. <laughs> well, 7 kills to 11. Things are slowly starting to come back in the favour of University of Auckland. The gold lead and from toss. 5k, shrinking by it's the minute. Chunked. And a lot of this comes to, I don't I don't want to say, is it Sydney making mistakes, but is it them being overzealous by the fact that they're just getting caught out one by one? Yes, they definitely are. Um, I don't know, they just, uh, they need to get Olaf in a, in an objective fight. Yeah. Like we saw it at the Herald. Okay, even though they got the Herald stolen, as long as he's there, they're going to win. Um, the problem with that dragon was he, he moved back to mid tier two tower to clear the wave. Um, and so... Auckland knew immediately that they could start the dragon, and they did. But uh, look, gold lead is still 4k. Zyra is still gigantic. They just need to get her involved in something, and um, they'll be in a good position. And I feel right now, you know, if Sydney do want to go passive and say, yeah, Zyra is this fed, 50 CS lead, 7 0, bounty of 700, yeah, okay, you know, Auckland, go for it. You can push top lane, you can push bottom lane, you can get some lane pressure, you can try and even out the scales and not get split push upon too much. Two but. big items bought for uh, Zaya there. She's got the BF and the pickaxe on her way to the IE. Kedu still only with the uh, the Bork. I imagine he has some gold. Otherwise, that's a very dis But that is sad a huge item look disparity. At. That is, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you're a Game of Thrones fan, but you know that Doran Shields, you know, could come in clutch. I mean, if it was a real shield. Then Zaya's feathers would be like, <laughs> I don't know. What would happen Nukes. to those feathers against the shield? Weapons of mass destruction. These are not normal. These are warheads. These are not normal feathers. Some future technology that we don't have yet. Always depends on the skin that you use. Obviously, skins give you wins. Of course. But finally, Sydney are happy. They say we've played passively. We've let you have your fun in the playground that is Summoner's Rift. Baron is available. Time to scan. There's the control ward. There are our sweepers. Wards all over the map. Where are you going to play? Where are you going to be? And Omo, where is that smite button? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, the next big objective is, uh, is that Baron, and that's one that you don't want to miss. They are establishing some Baron control, um, which is the right move. They have mid-priority. Fortunately for Auckland, they have a few wards on the deep side of the Baron over in the jungle, which doesn't really help you with Baron, but at least tells you if they are moving in and out of that area. Um, and it also gives uh, Yin Yang somewhere to TP to. Quick glimpse into the scoreboard there to really hammer oh. home the point we mentioned before. Yeah, it's 4K only in that ADC position. It's disgusting. That's nasty. It's like watching me play AD. 
Don't talk about my AD. <laughs> we don't want to see that. But he does have items. Now, that is the Saving Grace Carbon. He's even uh, picked up a Control Ward because he's a team player. And that's a culling uh, thrown away for a pink ward. They are mass pinging mid lane. You know, there's an opportunity for them to get mid priority while Zyra is in the jungle, but Oriana is making her way across. I'm not sure what kind of dragon this is, but looks like there's going to be a team fight for it. And of course, it is a fire. Kedu. Oh, no, jumps on in. Kedu the focus point. No culling, no chance. Does have the dash. Does get knocked up. Candles diving deep. What can he do? Zoran looking to try and get the fag. Uh, sorry, the, the, the gun from downtown. <laughs> Dear me, even I'm confused because this fight is left, right, and center around this pit. It is another Infernal Drake. Is the game broken? Because all I see is red. And it might not be just from the Drake. It may be from the colors of the University of Sydney. Yeah, finally we get uh, Olaf in a big team fight. Omo again doesn't smite. Luckily for him, there was no enemy jungler around, but Zoot secures the dragon. Uh, but yeah, Olaf finally there. I mean, he even got, he ate the Surge ult. Yasuo flashed forward on his head and uh, none of it mattered. She's just, uh, she's just that fair desire. So hopefully that tells them that anything that she's involved in, they will win and see if they can make something happen at the Baron. It definitely feels like we're leading towards that kind of win condition right now, where if you're Sydney, yeah, you need to force a fight with Desire, get a clean ace with the respawn time as being high enough to then start looking at uh, inner turrets and focusing towards inhibs. But if you're Auckland, okay. Do they get a little bit overzealous? Do they split their members around? Do they go for a Baron? And we can get a pick. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough for Auckland at the moment. I mean, Yasuo is that uh, saving grace for them at the current time. Uh, he does have the IE and the shiv, so he does do damage. There isn't really anyone who can match him in the side lane. I mean, Oriana doesn't want to be in the side lane. She wants to be around mid. And Jace versus Yas at this stage of the game, it's pretty difficult. Particularly once he has uh, that exhaust up. He does have the combat summoner advantage. Ryze is furiously pushing away. There's a bit of a stock check as to how this map has really unfolded. Only now just picking up that first turret in the bottom lane. But looking to draw some resources away, it will force the Jace to come on down. But this gold lead, despite being 5k, then 4, then 3, has been bobbing and weaving like a roller coaster all around between those numbers and still show no signs of showing. Uh, no shines. No, no shines. signs of slowing down like me and my English ability. Don't worry, you're just jet lagged. I am like jet University of Auckland in yes. game two. Yes, this is why we're losing. Exactly. Look, in game you know, one, tough. no jet lag game, but game two is yeah, when it kicked tough, in. Man. No. Delayed onset. Those big uh, three-hour flights, they, they take a lot out of you. They do. They definitely do. Baron control. Auckland do have the crab, though, so they have some vision. Omo trying to do his best to pretend like he's moving into the pit, but... I don't think Auckland's going to take the bait. Email does get caught. In trouble. And that's a one shot. Yeah, the portal was just not going to be enough. That's the pick that they need, though. This opens up a clear sign for Sydney to say we get the Baron, we get the game done and set and wrapped. And Omen might be in trouble here. They're forcing out 4v5. They're going to go for the Omen. There's no smite. There's no chance. There's no way for them to force this one. But Zaya says thank you very much. This is the kind of fight that I want where I can go rampant, where I can chase members down. Culling, it went across. It was perfectly lined up. But did you see anything? I saw no <laughs> damage go on to those members of Sydney. Oh, still and Zaya forward. is still dive. wanting more. He gets a double kill, but he's greedy for more. His scoreline looks so good as the Oriana comes down and says, Zoot, Zoot to you, as Kedu gets deleted. And do I see five members dead? Well, yes, Emelga's respawned, but it's technically an ace. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't really exist. He's just a support anyway. <laughs> Feels bad. <laughs> <laughs> Four people walking over to the Baron. Um, this should be free. I mean, there is no smite as Omo only just respawned and perhaps... But I mean, he doesn't smite anyway. That's true. Perhaps Email can uh, pull off the bar Q of the century. Doesn't look like it's to be though as he's collecting charms on the bottom side of the map, playing his own minigame. Realises that this game is lost, so he might as well start playing his own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 10 kill deficit. Um, we talked about gold leads before, 3 to 4 to 5k. Hang on a minute, I feel like that number has uh, exponentially grown since we last checked with that scoreboard. With a Baron buff to your name as well, yeah, it makes it a little bit hard to try and prevent Siege. What I really like about this is um, what it means for the rest of the series. After game one, I sort of thought, okay, 
Kedu and uh, MLG, they're just too good. Yeah. They're just too good, and they're just going to, you know, squash this landing phase every game, mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter what they pick. They're just going to win, take all the towers, blah, 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 3-0. We're going to get out of here. But having now seen Zyra Khan from Olaf and Kantos 17, I'm impressed. I have a renewed sense of hope that we might get a good series and that these two bot lanes are more evenly matched than I had originally thought. It was interesting to notice it all seems to revolve back to that pick and ban phase. The amount of attention yep. towards what, four? Was it four, five? Yeah, there was a ton ABC of bot lane bands. bands. Yep. As well as a few support bands as well. Uh, I think the big thing for next game, if you're uh, University of Auckland, is please don't die level one. Kedu, you say, oh, hang on. That's a flash burned. Yeah, level engage has definitely seemed to be. Uh, their flavor of the month, if you will. The pressure has been right, applied all lane. over the show. Top lane is where they're looking right now. Yin Yang with the stopwatch. Yin Yang with the death falling on down. <laughs> Which button is that? <laughs> Whatever bind you put it on. Maybe the panic one, maybe the escape button. Yep, that'd be a good one. I wonder what kind of game this would be to kill yourself with the button. Oh, that's a big return on. That is indeed. Oh, As Hecarim oh. jumps on in. Fodder up with the Orianna ult, and they just start to take casualties left, right, and center. Double for Jace, one for Zaya. Turret picked up as well. That is the end hit. Not a single casualty on the side of University of Sydney. Oh, she wrote. Nexus turrets is where they want to party. The Nexus itself is where they want to end. As you say, Carbon, we really do have a series on our hand. A best of five is what we have. We're now tied up. One for one. Yep. Zoot did hula hoop that Oriana ult at the end, which is always painful to watch, but uh, congratulations to him and his squad for uh, taking away game two. I suppose really now we have to start thinking about what this really means for the grander scheme of it all. It's never nice to see a clean Frio, as much as it makes our life easy. <laughs> I mean, it is a it quick trip home, them. but uh, I much prefer them. watching a good series. I much prefer watching two teams who, uh, who really want it. Yeah, um, yeah I'm, uh, I'm totally impressed by, uh, by Olaf and Kantos. Being able to turn that game around, I think the Rakan ults were, re the Rakan engages were really clean. I really love the re creative level one using mm -hmm. that W to get over the wall, sit in the bush, and wait for someone to rock up. I wonder what we'll see at game three. Do you feel, or is it too early to say at this stage, based on how you've been describing Kedo in this bot lane, do you feel like Auckland a little bit too dependent on him to pop off? Mm, potentially. Potentially. I mean, the solo lanes really didn't do anything. Uh, but then again, neither did the solo lanes of uh, of Usid. Sure. I feel like everyone in this game right now is just is just focused on getting their bot lane ahead, and whoever's bot lane gets ahead has won the game. I mean, we've only seen two, which is not a huge sample size, but mm -hmm. then again, it's only five. You know, there's only five games to play, so. Well, it's going to be another one right after this break. We're going to go away once more for 10 minutes. Let these players recalibrate, redraft, rethink, and maybe read up what Yumi does, because I'm sure that's what me and uh, Carbon are do off air. So we'll see you in 10. Don't go anywhere.
We are tied up here one for one at the Oceanic University Championships here in Sydney for a best of five that really, first of all, I suppose, started off as like, well, this seems a little bit interesting. This could be a clean 3 0. And then off the back of a break, suddenly we say, hey, that was the exact same game, swap the names around, yep, and look the same. Yeah, yeah, that was a uh, complete 180 from game one. Uh, you, you said really. Making that Zyra Khan work. Yeah. Uh, I think he finished the game 9-0, 8-0, something along those lines. Massive performance out of Olaf and Kantos. Um, super excited to see what that means for the draft this game. I mean, we saw four, four AD bands and like two or three support bands as well. So curious to see whether that'll get pinched again. Um, not sure of the sides at the moment, which side, because uh, it is... Auckland's pick, I believe, this game. Yeah, I believe Houston have gone for the red again. So red, uh, red again. sticking okay. with what they know and love. And uh, after the last game where they painted the map red, where they got the Infernal Drake, they became one with the Drake. Um, they are looking to carry on their barbarian ways going into game number three. All tied up here, one for one. New Zealand up against Australia. That's how I'm going to paint this picture right now. It's no longer Auckland versus Sydney. No, this is New Zealand versus Australia. Hang on a minute. I'm on the Sydney side. We need to we need to flip this around. It's flip those like around. Maybe we can swap seats. Uh, okay, Nico first. We're going to see. Are we going to see the same draft yet again? Nico, Aurelia, Rakan. Mm. Interesting. It actually Not is desire. quite interesting from a sense of picking bands, how reactive the bands have been from one game to another. Like that actually hurt us a fair bit in terms of maybe we go full circle where, hey, Israel's available again. Yeah, I mean, for me, uh, 
generally, when you're looking at a really strong bot lane, it's the support you want to change. Unless, like, the AD carry is just, like, they're just playing, like, a broken, you know what I mean? Like, it's just broken. There's nothing you can do about it. But, yeah, sure. Like, uh, for me, I wouldn't have banned Ezreal. I would have banned... Um, the Yumi and like this game again, I think that Auckland have done, made the right move by banning the Rakan. Yep. As we see that Ezreal get banned again by uh, the University of Sydney. Another They're first pick Rise. This. They really like that champion. I mean, look, Rise is super strong. You can flex it to mid, uh, you can flex it to top. Absolutely, you know, in the meta. They are obviously comfortable on it, but has not had a big impact in either game. This is interesting, though. Oh, this is very okay. flavoursome in the bot lane. This is what Sydney have been doing, picking up their bot lane very quickly. And a Varus fresh springs to mind for me as something that has a lot of kill potential, if spec's right, for level two. Yeah. Bit of uh, aggression. Varus, a very strong laner. Thresh can be a very strong laner. Curious to see what... Uh Keru and Amel pick up. We've got the Callista and what do you want? He's looking at his AD. I want a Sejuani support. Keru's looking at his AD. What do I pick here? Nautilus. Nautilus, nice. Another strong champ. Yep. So we've got Nautilus against Thresh. Now I'm pretty sure that I can't remember who wins that lane, but I'm pretty sure one of them actually wins the lane pretty hard. And I want to say it's Thresh, but I don't know. Uh, that Syndra got left up, was banned last game. Mm -hmm. Zoot looking to pick it up again. He was strong in game one. He did have farm, but he didn't get much done. So instead, he's going to take the LeBlanc. Okay. A lot easier to roam on LeBlanc than uh, on the Syndra. And uh, Omo, you can see on your screen now, very animated during the draft. Very animated during the game also. Mm-hmm. Definitely denied himself twice. Very yes. happy with his antics on the map right there. Yes. Said you only banned uh, away, so we're not going to see that for the third time in this game. I suppose Nautilus is quite flexible in where he can operate for the most part, but by taking away the Sejuani, it's uh, veering towards, I'd say, that bottom lane support. J4 yeah. taken as well. So really trying to choke out what is available when it comes for um, Elliptic. Elliptic. This is the first game that sejuani has been banned, so it'll be interesting to see... What else he has up his sleeve? How deep does the pool go? Nautilus could go jungle, I suppose, although it's not very good. Nautilus mid also got played a little bit, but I don't expect it to go there either. Ekram taken off the table. So we're going to get uh, probably jungle blind pick here. Mm -hmm. Serenus with the TP smite, and that tells me that he's probably going to play Jax. So let's see whether we get Jax here on the next pick. Rek'Sai, Hover, very strong in the current meta. Rek'Sai would be interesting because it would push the envelope further that they Olaf want to go for aggressive. Olaf, fitting. Okay, the cosplay is real. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize when at LAN you had to dress up for the occasion. I think there's something to that. I feel be. like more people should do that. The skin that became the skin IRL. Ah, maybe it's Olaf with Spite. And not Jax with Smite. I've seen a lot of Jax with Smite top, but I imagine that Olaf can also build that Cinder Hulk. Red Smite. Skana available. Uh, Skana locked in. The Skana. I feel like... I don't think Skana is very strong at the moment. Now, I'm not... 100%. This is a different patch to what MSI was played on, but we certainly didn't see any Skana there as far as I'm aware. And Well, saw a little bit, I think, in the group stage, but... I think this veers back to the opening point you mentioned at the start there, Carbon, about pocket picks and uh, comfort picks. And yep. you know, looking at the semi-final when they went all the way 2-1 to one against Griffith uh, University, Skana was banned religiously all three games against okay. Auckland. So maybe a pocket pick that um, Elliptic has up his sleeve when situations like this do arise in the pick and ban phase. Yep. Uh, okay, well, fair enough. If he's uh, plays a lot of Skana, then I understand why they would pick it. Um, but yeah, it seems to me the Elliptic very keen on playing those tank junglers, and they're not really, um, they're not really meta. Although, Olaf moves to the jungle, not to top. As I was postulating, Zarina switches his Sion up back to Flash, away from the smite. Takes away the GP, GP versus Sion. 
GP will uh, essentially free farm mm -hmm. for the first 15, which is exactly what GP wants, but I think uh, University of Auckland are going to have to come up with some way to punish him early. But against an Olaf and with a Skarna, it's easier said than done. I mean, I'm seeing two isolation tools of both Skarna and Nautilus to try and lock down a key immobile target, but outside of that, I'm thinking just the sheer strength that Sydney have if they come at you as a full five-man unit, they have lockdown with the Varus. Then they say, oh, hang on a minute. You want more lockdown? There comes the box. Oh, you want to die now? Zook mm -hmm. jumps in. Uh, and not to mention Omo with his smiling face will definitely do work with the Olaf. So a lot of a pick potential ball. there. Yeah, a lot of pick potential. Uh, GP sort of gives him that late game insurance a little bit. The rest of those champions don't scale super well. Maybe Varus, but uh, on the other hand, Auckland, a lot of CC on this team. Yep. Very tanky. We'll see whether Emogen takes uh, the Aftershock or whether he takes that Phase Rush again. I think Aftershock in this matchup is almost a must, but I don't know. I thought it was a must before as well, and he didn't take it. So we'll see when we get into game. But uh, got Nort, pseudo frontline. We've got Skarna, true frontline. Scion, true frontline. And then the sort of tanky rise with that lifesteal stacking Callista. So University of Auckland going to have a very strong mid game if they can get there. But uh, the early game is going to be pretty difficult for them. And Emogen has taken that phase rush once more. So he's going to have to play this lane phase very well as we see four people run into this bot side river. But nothing doing as Kantos is in the right place at the right time. Yeah, not going to fall for that uh, first blood and take one more time. First game without a pre lane phase level one. It may be. Well, it may just it be has a case been so of far. let's sit at the turrets, let's wait for the minions to come in, and let's play some League of Legends. But you can see how far back uh, Emel is sitting. Does not want to die again. He's all the way back at that wraith pit. It's traumatized. Yep. But I think you do raise a valid point from before that Sydney, off the or off the back of that previous win, how dominating it was from the early game with not the most early game composition, are saying let's just go all in on that idea if we can secure the map and they're not going to punish us. And this is the third game in the row that Omo, every game he's just doing all he can to take this blue buff away from Elliptic, and that is going to be so frustrating as Elliptic because he's just playing these level six power spike tanks. Just wants to hit his six. Yep. Doesn't want to fight. Unfortunately, Omo says, well, if you're not going to do anything, I'm just going to take your shit. And the thing is, like, Omo's allowed to do this for the most part because they've been so stubborn Ooh, on this with the level pick. two. Should have been spotted by the ward. Flash yeah. comes out from... Em oh, Nautilus has got that one. Flash comes in, but Flash the response and a heal for good measure as well. Oh, someone has been burnt in that bottom lane. Trading two for one flashes there. But I suppose to really echo my point from beforehand, the fact is they've been so stubborn in this rise that Omo feels free that he can do this because there is no chance for a rise to come in and roam because he's so pushed up against the lane. Yes, that's entirely true. Um, this blind pick rise has been counterpicked every game. Has spent a lot of time at his tower. Does open up the map for Omo, but at the same time, it's these uh, passive tank jungle picks that... I mean, really, even if he was there, there's not much you can do. Two flashes burned in that bot lane gank for the one of Kantos. Elliptic realizing that because his Skarna um, mark, I'm going to call it, pillar? It's a pillar, I think. Skarna pillar was taken. He knows. He was in my top side again. Or maybe he's just guessing because he's done it every other game. And he says, I need this blue, guys. It's a rave know. station, actually, I believe. A no, rave start, station. Start dancing. It's a Saturday night here. It is Saturday night. Exactly. You raving tonight? Be raving all the way back home. <laughs> we can ask the air hostess <laughs> to uh, put something fun Play on. Play some beats on over the yeah. overhead. The six speakers they have over there. Oh, absolutely. You fly Air NZ? I didn't. I actually was patriotic. Uh, maybe I've jinxed my counterparts here of Auckland. I flew with Qantas. Ah. See, Terrible mistake. I was going to say, I reckon Air NZ would have pretty good overhead speakers. Oh, they actually do. I've flown with them a few times and it's been amazing every time. 
No, Qantas, uh, that was the choice, that was the play. Hashtag not an ad. Just saying. Hashtag indeed. Uh, what's going on? Let's have a little look at the scoreboard. We've got a 13 CS lead for the Olaf, who has just completely obliterated the jungle so far. <laughs> Elliptic did get the blue buff. I Wait, did he? Oh. Oh, so oh, that's a big hook. That's a massive hook, but the Kano engage with the hook that comes up from Emelga as they dash, they run, they look to try and use whatever they can, but no boots, no attack speed, no chance to dodge the onslaught that Averis has when he flashes in your face. First blood, deja vu, game one, game two, game three, that's what we see. Yeah, that's our third game in a row that Bodland has died for first blood, and unfortunately for the Kiwis, it's, uh, it's Olaf with another kill, or rather... An assist. Kill goes over to Kantos, but I mean, you'll take that. Still gold. Still denying some CS. Chain lands. Health bars, though, still pretty even. Okay, well, that's the last pot burned for Imogen. Uh -oh, this One is more scary. pot still for Zoot, and I mean, that's the problem with not taking that uh, Aftershock. You just lose so much HP from those trades, and LeBlanc can just do it over and over and over again. You're going to slowly whistle your way down in that lane, and um, it makes you start to really question just this high priority for the rise whilst being meta, whilst having so many tools at his disposal. Just not really offering much in the grand scheme. I don't think Hang we've on, seen any flash. big... Imogen has flash. Just gets the flake. Oh. The hook doesn't land. Does have to burn the flash from Imogen. Chain lands as well. He did have the opportunity there to uh, potentially go for that flash predict, but... I mean, ultimately, you'll take the flash for a hex flash every day of the week. Unfortunately, he has been caught in the river, and suit cheating out of lane means that Kedu and Emel let him get away. Crab going to go over to Elliptic. He is uh, a level behind, and a base behind Omo, who's just picked up his boots, doesn't have that predator. So expect him to uh, make his presence felt soon. Definitely in terms of levels. He's going to start to become a one-man wrecking crew in a sec. He's definitely going to uh, roam down towards bottom, get six, go for the fight, look to claim Drake. Yes, Vision is definitely in favor of Auckland right now, but it can easily be negated just through another team fight, another successful engage. And I know so far, credit to Kantos, he's been pretty on point with these uh, flash, hex flash combinations. Yep. You saw that ping go down on Tier 1 Tower in the bottom lane. That was uh, Auckland. Assuming that uh, Omo was sitting behind at that tier one tower, waiting for the lantern to come in, and they weren't wrong. I mean, he was doing that grunt, but he was working his way down to bot lane. Kantos, he has those mobies. He's pinked that back bush, and it's a really scary position for them to be in because as soon as they approach the wave, at any time, Kantos can flash forwards with that with that lantern, and that's going to be at least one kill, if not two. Yeah, and I like the Moby rush here. Definitely uh, keeping consistent with what this theme. Uh, for the, their composition is early game pressure, get kills, build the lane, get the tempo, and just try and choke them out of ever actually reaching a mid to late game situation. And you no, know, so far so good. Seven minutes in, yes, only one kill, but still a 2k lead. Quite healthy to start off with. Omo making his way into the uh, blue side jungle. He's got that scanner. Trying to establish some uh, jungle control. I think that cone is up, and we'll see whether or not he uh, moves into bottom lane. Well, there's a sign up. Does force, force the flash. flash. We've seen some questionable uh, charges. He's very aggressive on this Scion. Oh, chain lands. The gank is there. This will get them level 6 for Omo if they can secure this one. Easy as anything. No flash. Chain lands. Predator did all off. There's no way you get out of that one. And uh, Imogen finally dies. He's been again camped for her three games now, and so far he's done a really good job of not succumbing to the ganks, but unfortunately this time he goes down. Barisalt lands. It does, it links them up, but not really going to find much more as a result of that. Ultimate had to be burnt as a response from Kedu to try and prevent Demelg. Maybe would have seen an aggressive response, but decides to play it passive. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, I mean, best case scenario there is that the Barisalt spreads to Callista while she's trying to pull email book lands. They don't take it though. Yeah, now that I check in, uh, Nautilus was only level five, so we're not going to achieve too much there. 
No. Sure, you can go Riptide and go, well, look at me. I'm oh, a big, yeah. big uh, <laughs> ogre in your face. No depth charge, no chance. At this stage, um, the bot lane is still pretty even. I mean, there is that gold lead. You can see 400 at the moment. But in terms of actual items, both ADs are level 6. One has a Vamp Scepter. One has Double door, uh, double Longsword, rather. So the, the damage is relatively even. Um, but Varus not having that ult, it's a massive part of his damage. Whereas for Kalista, the ult is really not that relevant. I mean, for her, it's obviously very relevant for her support, but you only really get a little bit of CC out of it. All her damage is the same, regardless of whether her ult is up or not. So, mm -hmm. oh, hook Ooh, that's a massive hook right there. Depth charge instantly to follow. The flash has to come across. The double flash to respond. Keru finds that kill. And they say, thank you very much. We found our moment like a needle in a haystack. Pincer, perfect precision. Needle in a haystack is a, a, a great way to describe it because Neither Olaf nor I expected that hook to land and doesn't burn the flash to avoid the hook. Oh, uh, the phone though, the box goes out and Melgan just gets the hook. That's the easiest one he'll find all day long, but Olympta gets amongst it. That's assist bonuses for him. They may get the response though. That's going to be Olaf looking to pop the ultimate. LeBlanc jumps in. Can she get the one shot blow up? That's going to be the clone. Kedu does survive and the members of Auckland say thank you very much. You spent your time here in the bottom lane. You didn't get the punishment. You didn't get the response. And Imogen goes, well, it's time for me to try and do something in this mid lane. Yeah, picks up a plating for his troubles. That's uh, saved by the bell in a sense there. Rise. Just an opportunity now to uh, maybe catch up a little bit in terms of the CS and gold. Huge play there out of the, uh, the Auckland bottom lane. Just when we thought Perhaps you said we're uh, beginning to pull away in this matchup. They yep. uh, they, they make the it stick. They they land the hook. Flash forward from Kedu. Fortunately, no Callista ult for the Varus to uh, pull him away. And on that second dive as well, able to survive with all members. So huge play there from uh, the Kiwis. Well, Omo is going to completely uh, sacrifice the idea of even considering a Drake, given the amount of chaos that's happened in the bot lane. Deciding to say, well, top lane has been a stalemate, as you mentioned, a 15-minute just farm fiesta, so pretty free for him to solo this. Yin Yang may just scout things out. It'll be a little bit too late, I am sure, as they get that to their name, get some more macro pressure. Yeah, Omo definitely seems like a uh, objective jungler. Cares very much about parving. He's looking to take buffs, looking to take uh, neutrals. Do we see a dive Hang in the bottom minute. lane about to happen? Death charge is available. The drag isn't, however. Ooh, Varus, Varus responds. Death charge instantly to try and turn stuffing around. The flay doesn't miss, or the, uh, the flay doesn't connect. It doesn't seem to matter. No Ooh, flash walk. on the fresh, but he gets the final kill. He gets a <laughs> double kill. Fresh is a carry. What is Varus doing? He's 0, <laughs> 1, and 3. And Fresh is like, don't worry. I'm collecting souls. Easy game. Triple uh, kill secure there by Kantos. The 3-1 Thresh, but look, you'll take it. Yep. At the end of the day, yes, it is nice. Kantos might be in a bit of trouble. Hang Doesn't on. realize that Skarner is here and... No flash. No tank stats. Um, See you later. Bounty successfully achieved. True. Shut down on the support. Not what you want. This is a nice Herald, though. I think he picks up three uh, bladings, which is about 500 gold or so. So It's a sizable effort. That's that's, uh, that's for sure. So you've got to be nearing that uh, that Ludens. Missing thing goes in top lane. Not sure where the GP is. Still doesn't have that Triforce. But will be there very soon. Top lane just... Uh, both doing their best Yumi uh, cosplays as they AFK. <laughs> oh, CC lands, but doesn't mean all that much. Serena's just going to eat those lemons and BK. Cloud Drake is what is available. Extra movement speed if you so desire. Wouldn't be too bad, to be quite honest, on the likes of... Um, you know, Olaf. the roaming potential. Olaf, LeBlanc for, for one, and even the Fresh, given that he's got the Moby Boots. We haven't seen too yep. many roams uh, mid since the Chaos. There's been so much going on, but he hasn't even had the chance. no time. No, he's, uh, he's busy being a babysitter. Or actually being the carry to the babysitting uh, Varys. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah. Definitely getting babysat. <laughs> uh, Elliptic also hovering this bot lane. He knew that uh, Omo was in the area as he had just cleared out some Baron. Dragon Vision, rather, and um, also picked up the Spire. 
which is what it is. It's a Spire. GP Just decides to hold on for the uh, teleport, actually. Ooh, so nice side step. Sion manages to deny a fair bit of creep into that top tower. I believe he's definitely going to be hanging on to that one for the potential Drake as pings start to uh, flourish around that section of your minimap. Yes, oh no, I think he just popped the Predator there. But uh, nothing doing, he's just running around really fast. No LeBlanc means no aggression, which is the right call. You don't want to fight it without your LeBlanc, she is super strong. Just finished that Ludens. Has a ring and an amp tome, just a little bit extra. She's definitely going to do a lot of deeps if she can get on top of someone, but... I don't know. This game, I feel like the pace has definitely slowed the last three minutes. Yeah, the first uh, first 10 were explosive. Since then, it's definitely evened things out. If you look at both AD carries now, they're, they're sitting on those blades. Both quite content with that one. Neither having a clear advantage over the, uh, over the other. So that skill matchup that you've been referring to between the likes of uh, Kedo and Olaf is definitely going to be on full display if we do have a Dragon Contest. Indeed. Bought completed for both ADs, although Olaf going home, so I expect that he has... An extra purchase, potentially just those boots. And you get some extra daggers as well, so 600 gold advantage. There's a big root, will elliptic flash? No. Like the opportunity to though, Zoot was, uh, took a lot of damage there from the, uh, the rise combo. Confident in the ability to stay alive. Definitely preferring to hang on to that, maybe call it greed, but wanting to ensure that Able to keep up that lane pressure and use it for a, uh, a pick later on. Indeed, Olimo making his presence felt. Definitely feels like Imogen's Cops a lot a more comfortable up. now in this middle lane, able to yeah. fend off two members despite the problems that we talked Ooh, about. He flash flashes forwards. in and says goodbye! Why did you not flash, Zoot? I told you once and I'll tell you twice. This time, I won't give you an out. And you can see from the frustration of Zoot in the mini camera there that even he knows, yeah, maybe I should have. It's not how you want to go down. Unfortunately, uh, as soon as Emogen hits that route, there's not much that Zoot can do. And Skarner does have the drag. He's going to use it. Looking for Sion to come on in and clean things up. The flash is good. The double flash actually as a response. And Omo instantly says, we Ooh, have to go for drag. I don't know about this one. Omo's very low already. And there's two solo laners who are not on the map. Emogen is porting in. <laughs> Oh, and I'm glad that Kantos didn't land that hook because if they'd taken that plant, I'm afraid that a few more uh, Aussies may have died. This is really good right now for Auckland. They're actually going to completely even up the scoreline for the first time this game. Gold-wise, both sitting at 27.5k. Yeah, and this is the first game that we've really seen a team come back. Oh, flash play. Flash play into the box, into the death charge. There's a response right there as Olaf gets the grab and he gets the jump on in. Flash, unstoppable damage is done. Oh, He's taking the turret oh, all oh. day long. I'm not too sure really what the objective of all of that was, but Yen Yen says hello. He's here as Nautilus jumps on into the fray and says, well, I guess I'll just donate a double kill. Perhaps I give you a triple kill, but Kantos says, hang on a minute, Varys. <laughs> I am the carry in the spot on lane. Me. I am four Oh, is he going to get it? One more auto? No, too slow. Deary me, Carbon. Monster hook out of Kantos, lands it onto uh, Kedu again. Callista, very mobile, but not, uh, not when she's chained. You could see MLG trying to uh, body block there, but you can't body block a Flay. And yeah, great gank. Omo, he was out here, got saved by the heal. Runs back into the tower to die. Olaf, a nice flash, and then Zoot, he fails the double distortion, but Q chain is enough. And double for the Varus. Questionable, really, for both Nautilus and Olaf. I mean, Olaf, you could argue maybe trying to block the hook if I'm trying to really think outside the box here, but... Uh, um, Olaf, for sure, just thinks he's dead. So he <laughs> thinks, well, might as well just kill myself making sure that this guy dies. Doesn't realize that he's getting saved. Um, and Nautilus... We, he aggressively flashed in to just use Riptide. Yeah. Like, no members uh, were clearly looking to disengage. No yeah. members were looking to die. Yeah, sometimes you just panic, I suppose. Try and do what you can, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, that flash play was enough to get it done. Boxes are 99% slow, and if you're the one who walks through it, you don't get very far very quickly. Do you think MLG is one of the kind of guys that has those posters above his uh, dorm that says, like, you miss every opportunity that you don't take? Maybe. You know, maybe that was oh. why he jumped in. Zoot 
W's forwards to try and get that tray, but Imogen, he's got uh, he's got the Archangel Staff completed. He has uh, the Oblivion Orb as well, packing a lot of DPS. Not someone you want to tank, and I think Zoot just found out that he no longer <laughs> wins this lane. Midtower probably about to fall. Soft Breeze would have done it, but uh, it's a Rise auto attack that kills it in the end. As another look lands. They have charged to start things off. Hulk follow up. Kelly playing very defensively right now, not looking to try and do much. Oh, isn't up. And Olaf says, Thank you very much. I'll just use the blade. I'll make sure that you are just mince me because Kelly's given up on me. The hook nearly actually predicts things out there. As Elliptic gets amongst the chaos to try and retreat and try and force a 3v3. Also, it's had to be burnt though. Gangplank did actually, from the uh, top lane, try and prevent any disengage as Olaf was coming from that try. But, you know, all this pressure carbon into the bottom lane and still the, the likelihood of going for a Drake or any objective just doesn't seem desirable. No, it's, uh, it's really tough at this point. I mean, Callista ult was maybe five to ten seconds off from coming on cooldown there, which is uh, unfortunate. You could tell that... Um, Melgus, is it all in or is this another meme trade? Let's find out. Let's no, not, we won't. Let's not find out. Let's the observer decides that we do not want to see that. We actually oh, want to look Imogen at mid lane. with the 1v2. And Imogen, yeah. Um, maybe this is what we've been waiting for all series long. The yep. reason why this is the pick to go for. The route from Olaf. That gets chucked out. Trying to save Kantos, but he is in a world of pain. As he chucks MLG forward, saying, can you be the chosen one? Can you find the pick that we need? No depth charge, but you do have that big hook. Rice is on his way down as well. I fear for Olaf's life here. Elliptic, he's tanky enough. He's not worried about the tower. That's, That's a drive-by. Nice shutdown goals. Okay, I think Olaf's were right. I think this was just a mean trade when it was happening. Although, getting closer by yak. the second. Oh, oh it's no. So close. That last minion auto, not enough. Oh, that hurts. Serenus finally getting that solo kill he's been trying for so uh, intently over the last two games. As uh, Batao falls, still a 1k gold lead for you, Sid, although I suspect that it is the GP Klepto. And a quick look at the scoreboard lets me know that I was indeed correct. <laughs> Always nice. It is. 21 minutes into this game, and we do see our first Drake. A Cloud Drake at that does actually go in the hands of Auckland, so giving them extra mobility that they may need just to try and mirror what has been rather aggressive out of the side of Sydney. We haven't seen too many roaming gangs from the likes of Kantos recently, as it still definitely has been the eyes of bot lane. But Imo, known for his objective control, looking to now turn his attention to top lane. Two items completed for the Varus. That means with uh, a second to warm his Gwinsu's up. He's going to be pumping out the deeps. Clissa also on two items, but uh, I mean, the Phantom Dancer is nice, but it doesn't really have the same damage that uh, the Gwinsu's has. It's going to give her a little bit of extra tankiness, a little bit of extra move speed, but Varus at that two item mark, if he's given the opportunity to stand and deliver, he really makes you pay as. This is scary right now for Kedu as he actually takes the 1v1 in mid lane against Zoot. It's the fight took place to the left as well. If you look to your right, you look to your left. There's fights taking across all over the show. MLG getting the flash across, making sure that he survives. Olaf is looking for Kedu. Across. Kedu is still looking to try and hug this turret. Olaf going <laughs> for the snipe, but it wasn't the headshot that he was after. And you talk about item advantages. Doesn't amount to anything when you are dead. And Elliptic will run this fresh all the way down. One, two, and maybe three if they can find anything happening in this bottom lane. Question mark ping on the bottom lane. And what that means is uh, they're asking themselves, what on earth is this Olaf doing down here? We're just going to start the Baron because we just want a team fight. And Jungle's on the other side of the map. Nowhere near smite range. You can see the GP ult lands, but it's not scary though. Look how low Skarner is. Look how low Skarner is. Zoot has the potential to make this oh. happen. But Rise! Is he going to die to Baron? No, no, he is not. No Ignite, no chance. But did I hold my breath for a second? LeBlanc could have got in there and just ended their entire careers. But... And yeah, Obo looking for that blue buff. But uh, on the wrong side of the map there, buddy. No friends. No ult. Means that, that CC is relevant. And it's the third death this game for the uh, jungler of... University of Sydney. It quickly went from bad to worse. Yeah, it definitely did. Uh, Image is just doing so much damage. 
And Olaf in that team fight, he could see his name in lights. He knew he had the opportunity. I'm going to kill Kedu. I'm going to 1v1 him under tower. Yep. Then we're going to take mid. Then this game's going to be ours. But unfortunately, he wasn't able to do that. And really, it just sort of looked like he entered. Standing in between two towers. There's the AD carry with no support, no peel. Ultimately, a very easy death. Is it too early for pun jokes? Uh, well, I don't know what time it is because... Do you want to hear me out? I'm trapped in a cast of dungeon, <laughs> but I think it's around 4 o'clock, so I'm going to say that it's not too early. Well, Carbon, would you argue that Olaf was maybe a little bit overzealous with his play before because he has no zeal item? Ah, a stretch, but a pun nonetheless. Uh... No, I'm going to say he was not overzealous. He just team lost the team fight. He thought, oh, uh, me kill bot. And then got bot Smoke. and was like, oh, wait. <laughs> me go face. <laughs> Enemy team get Baron. Well, hook thrown, hook missed. Soon to be a 2k lead for Auckland as they carry on their siege in mid lane. Bot lane has been pushed out quite easily as Imogen is there and, well, we've known, uh, learned anything from the past 10 minutes is that they do a lot of damage up yeah. against the likes of Zoot. So Zoot goes down there to respond, but really can't do much to prevent this turret falling on down, which it does. Split pressure is now hurting, especially with the Baron buff. Empowered minions comes on the it's flank. Let's try and make something happen right there. There's the box. There's the ulti. There is the collapse of just members bouncing around like it's a kid's birthday party. Zoot runs away, but Zoot gets clawed oh. down. And the shutdown from Varus saying, you do not go anywhere. Oh, dearie me, the base defense is impeccable that by was, Sydney. Uh, that was some crazy damage at the uh, at the back end of that team fight. Uh, I really thought that the game was about to end there. It was an interesting choice to, uh, to all in, but um, they make it work somehow. We see here, Predator gets popped by Olaf. Barris ult, GP ult, a lot of AoE damage. Callista stuck on the outside of his team fight, unable to rejoin the team fight. And uh, QSS from Barris means he gets to live. And you'll see Imogen oh, That's just cops a fully charged Barris Q to the face. And um, yep, that's what Barris will do if he's allowed to stand and deliver. Mm, that'll do it. TP here from the LeBlanc. Looks like they're going to be contesting. Kedu has to flash over the wall. Chain misses, but hook oh, lands. Oh, the cleanse. That QSS came in, clutches. Omo picks up the Drake. It's an infernal one, but they're going to look to try and turn things around as Varus is forced to blink away over the wall. Turret does go down. Imogen actually finding a solo kill onto Kantos, making it a 4v5 despite the objective being picked up. And Elliptic has one target in mind. He doesn't have to drag. No ulti available to his name just yet, but he's going to definitely be chasing this Varus down. Kedu. Will die eventually, but they are stuck in the base now, although there is a big fat wave at the tower, so oh suit gets hooked. MLG getting the hook when it really does matter. 16 kills to 13. That's only gonna go up as the respawn time is really start to hammer hard home. And Fresh is available. <laughs> Dude. And uh Kedu. Uh, I mean that would have been the game if he didn't do that, but Kedu desperately wanted another kill. And uh, so we're going to have to wait 35 seconds for him to respawn. And we'll see what tower they decide to push. They're only a 2k lead, which is not huge. But GP does inflate your gold pretty significantly. If you look at the mid lane, there is a large item and XP discrepancy. Likewise, in the jungle position. Um, Emergen in game three really showing us why Auckland uh, value that first pick rise so heavily. The fascination has now been um, satisfied, to be quite yeah. honest. I mean, we've we've questioned it in terms of, hey, have these solo lanes been making much of an impact? Has it all been about this bottom lane? But this game, for sure, it's been like, yes, bottom lane does do work, but this is a pick that is justified when given the resources or when given the time, maybe to warm up or maybe just to find the moments where somebody slips up. Absolutely. Um, I... I mean, assuming this game goes to uh, Kiwis, really need to see more out of Zoot next game. We've seen him get the counter pick on this mid lane rise pick three games in a row. And um, even in the game they won, he wasn't super relevant. Wasn't convincing. I think, um, yes, you know, rise in the first two games wasn't super relevant, but also he got a ton of jungle attention. 
you see, team fight erupt. We do indeed. The box goes out. Follow up by the barrage from Gangplank as LeBlanc gets the flank onto Kedu. Is Kedu in trouble? Yes, he is. Completely zoned out of this fight. Look at that health bar. GA was not popped, however. Ola finds one. Kedu finds a response. Scion and LeBlanc off the field. It's a 4v4 as the fight goes down mid lane. That's where the super creeps are. That's where they want to try and force things. Elliptic flashes on forward. Doesn't have the ultimate, but that doesn't seem to be a concern of his as he finds the key target in Varus, who didn't have flash, who had no mobility, is weak with that skill set. Members are falling from Sydney. Kedu, please, your health bar is low. Do not troll us one more time, otherwise Carbon may just be broken. But the turret plating is going to fall on down on the very first Nexus turret, aiming towards the second and aiming to go for 2-1 in this series. Yeah, looks like that'll be it. Kedu once again diving the pool. Doesn't die this time though, although the flay brings him very close to death. 2-1 to the Kiwis and uh, back to the drawing board for uh, UCIT. 2-1 in this best of five series. Back and forth we go. Is yeah. really the only way to say this is it hasn't been clear and cut. I, I really like the point. I want to focus on that a little bit more about Zoo. If you're getting those counter picks, you should be literally dominating. You should literally be asserting what is known about that. And it all started off with the first game with the Jarvan to say, look, let me put all my resources into this for the first 10 minutes. Let me try and find something from this. It was pretty Yeah, I mean, uh, Rise is an extremely strong champion. So we'll just get that out of the way, first of all. Rise is super strong, but at yes. the same time, LeBlanc... We saw him maybe once or twice cheat into that bottom lane. We saw a lot of action there early, but really needs to be doing more. I think he picked mm. up that first early kill. No, it went to the Olaf, but still, that first gank was actually successful this time, but wasn't able to make much work on the LeBlanc. And um, what did he have? Syndra game one, same thing. Had a lot of farm, got a lot of jungle priority, but wasn't able to turn it into any teamfight wins. So I think if you're University of Sydney, either you're sacking him in the draft, you're mm. giving him, you know, Either you just ban the rise or you don't worry about the counter pick, just give him like a wave clear, something safe, something mm -hmm. team fighty. Got to see more out of Zoo. Well, we're going to have to wait and see what That's the. My uh, Zoo review. <laughs> what they decide. Maybe they go for a Yumi ban? Is it, is it ever going to come? Is my final thought here. Uh, I mean, they didn't ban it last game. I think the real question is do you play Red Side again if you're University of Sydney? Mm. They played Red Side three games, they did win one. But this is it now. If you lose now, you're out. Match do you roll point. the dice on something else? Or do you say, no, our one win was enough. I think we can do that again. Well, we're going to find out. Is it the conclusion of this best of five series? Will the Kiwis reign superior? Or do Sydney on home soil still have more up their sleeve? Find out in 10.
Welcome back to the Oceanic University Championship and uh, good news if you're a Kiwi fan like myself but mm. maybe not so much if you're a local here Come in on, Sydney. Come on Aussies. Because they are currently down in this best of five series two and one. My name is Skimmy. I am joined by the esteemed Carbon as we crack on in with what could be very well match point victory. The chance for us to beat you at another sport <laughs> or am I getting a little bit too far ahead of myself? No, it certainly is match point. I mean, you only need to get to three games to win, and they have two already. So very good position for uh, the University of Auckland. We just saw another very strong performance out of them uh, in game number three. All of these games have been pretty quick, although I guess that is sort of the meta at the moment, just everyone playing aggro. Everyone playing aggro champs. When you get behind an aggro champs, the game ends pretty fast. Uh, you sit electing. To stay on red side. Mm. So both teams obviously very comfortable on the, the sides that they are and going to get probably another pretty similar draft. That was your closing point before we went to the break was, you know, I'd like to see something different coming out here from, uh, you said, you know, going away from this red pick priority, maybe switching to blue, maybe swapping up how these picks and bands would come about in terms of priorities. But, I mean, apart from that, the other priority was, uh, you know, we want to see more coming out here from Zoot, having three counter picks mm. in a row, not really finding much value. For me personally, I'd like to see Elliptic play something a little bit more damage orientated. Maybe not yeah, something okay. so tank focused, because as you say, we know that uh, Omo loves to be objective focused. Yep. Every game, without a shadow of a doubt, he's just walked all in, no worries. Wards are there. It doesn't seem to matter, though. He just picks up a free blue buff, and the cannon jump yeah. continues. Yep. I mean, uh, I think what I was talking about before the break is it, it can be quite stressful. If you're Usid, you're now 2-1 down, and it's, you have the choice. Do you go back to the same side where you a, where you won a game, or do you throw caution to the wind and just and totally mix it up? Do you... Your red, red side draft might might be much better than your blue side draft, or you're just comfortable playing on red side. But th what makes this decision so difficult is it's the last decision you get to make, assuming you lose. And um, it's a tough one, right? Because you know you're in this high-pressure situation. Do you change what not necessarily is broken, or do you just take an, uh, a wild leap of faith? We do see the Rise okay. Band, which is nice. And you did discuss this before. The other two bands I want to lightly touch on is the fact that both Ezreal and Rakan were the biggest wins that either side had won. So those have, since those games, been a, uh, a band without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, so... Uh, Morgana is the first pick, the takeaway. We'll see whether that goes middle support. Morgana mid has been very oppressive in recent times. I think it had almost 100% ban rate at uh, MSI and had 100% ban rate in this series also up until now. So mm -hmm. we'll see what kind of damage they're able to do with the Morgana and where they decide to put it. We see uh, someone, over, uh, someone on the uh, on the side of uh, Yusit <laughs> maybe not happy with the direction the draft is going in. That first pick, Hecarim taken away for Omo. Who would they follow up with? Galio locked in. Going back to the Galio pick, which um, found them arguable success in the game they played beforehand. I think what's interesting for me here, Carbon, though, is Morgana's been played twice in the semi-finals leading up to this. Both times it was played as a support because Ryze was uh, available. Ah, okay. Well, we'll see what they do now that Ryze has been banned. Liptic once again. On the Sejuani. Um, one for one so far in the series. With the Sedge. Caitlyn. Okay. Blind pick AD. Caitlyn doesn't have a ton of counters other than Jinx. Which is the lock-in. So Olaf opting into that Jinx. Let's see Jinx Galio. Another pretty strong laner. Jinx is one of those champions who is a surprisingly strong lane phase. Yep. Sort of think about Jinx, and it's like, okay, she needs to scale. She yep. has no mobility. Really not very useful until she gets her first reset mm -hmm. or, you know, her big uh, execute ultimate across the map. Those are sort of the key things that people think about when they think about Jinx. But Jinx's lane phase is actually quite strong. The, uh, the attack speed from her minigun and the AoE damage from the bazooka means she's very strong in trades. Clears the waves very quickly, even from early levels. One of the few champions who's able to stand up to Caitlyn in the lane. Well, what this does mean for both these AD carries is if they do finally, if they are able to find some picks, then those turrets, the sieging that we've seen from rotations of bot to top and responding all over the map, it's just going to be so, so, I don't want to say easy, but definitely enabled. Mm. 
for sure. Galia able to uh, moving around. The map, especially once he gets a few points in that ultimate, a little bit of extra range. There it goes astray as uh, Jacket's off. The side of uh, so Auckland, this time. out. Showing those guns. 2-1 up. Time to get the guns out. Syndra off the board though. Him play better. Syndra did get banned. Okay, so... Yeah, I'm still not sure about... Okay, we get the tank top for uh, our friend Zarinus. He's played carries every game. Has mm -hmm. not been able to impact a single game, really. So now he's finally capitulated and said, Okay, you know what? Let me play something with some utility. Maybe that will be more relevant for us. Yep. Two run down. Let's change it up a little bit. And uh, I think that's the right move. I think it is, and something that springs to mind instantly for me is just the amount of wombo combo they have. If you think oh, yeah. about a Hecarim running in with a Raging Ball to follow, and then a Galio's like, well, which uh, which target do I choose? And then Jinx in the back, you know, laughing as she does, yep. a big bomb. Yep, I mean, uh, Jinx wombo is definitely the sort of thing that Jinx wants. She wants a big, fat front line that's going to soak up all the damage for her. Mm -hmm. The CC target, so she should get some free autos off and hopefully pick up that reset and... Wipe a team fight. Azir locked in, which means Morgana is going to go to support. Yep. And Zoot finds himself with a fourth counter pick of the day. Let's see whether or not he can make it work. Azir. Strong lane phase. Low mobility uh, in terms of roaming. Yeah. Kit actually does have a fair bit of mobility in it, but doesn't really want to leave lane as we see uh, Oriana taken. So all team fight for you, Sid. Completely. It is very much all or nothing right now. And the games leading up to this, if you've had a chance to watch the VODs, this is the identity of Sydney. Like the lion of their crest, they only know how to pounce into fights. They don't want to dart around. They don't want to get their thinking cap on. They don't want to quote unquote study. No, they just want to bash heads and take casualties. And uh, the one game that went successfully, it was pretty damn convincing. Yeah, and uh, as far as head bashing goes, um, this is a good team to do it. Uh, the University of Auckland also with a very strong team fighting team. They've gone double front line yet again. We've seen that Sion on Sichuani a number mm -hmm. of times. Azir, a ton of damage from the back. Caitlyn with items. If she's able to put those traps down also. A lot of damage. Morgana. Black Shield very useful against a uh, high CC squad like that of the University of Sydney. But uh, I've got to say, in terms of a raw team fight, Right now, I, I do like you, Sid, a little bit more. Just that Jinx Ori versus the Caitlyn Azir. Jinx Ori has the potential to just one-shot a backline. Yeah. Whereas uh, Azir, Caitlyn, they really need to make sure their positioning is correct. A lot more poke involved. Um, but we'll see what happens. Hopefully nobody dies, level one. <laughs> we get to see a, a, a nice last even game. lane phase. I mean, I look at this Auckland composition and I go, okay, if they don't die to the Wombo that you already mentioned and outlined, I feel like they win. Their composition is designed to counter-engage, to control. You've got the Azir ultimate, the Sejuani and Morgana ultimates as well. Looking to lock you in place, turn the tide of the fight. If you're a very burst-oriented composition, then it definitely okay, slows well, down the play. We see five people running in a pack, which means to me that they are going to invade somewhere. They do have Scion level 1 as well as the Morgana. Caitlyn can also potentially take traps. So we'll see what they do. But I think uh, Omo sniffed something out. He's standing all the way near his wraiths, just doing his little pony dance. Probably not much is going to come of this without a Morgana flash. Is this the response to the Omo invade? Are we about to see it? Yes. Oh, okay. Blind binding. But he's not there. He's taking the precaution. This is the last game. A metal uh, still well, it's their last chance, rather. It's not the last game. Oh, that landed. That's going to be a bit of poke. And, oh, okay. At least the, I thought if that Caitlyn Q landed, that Zoot is in a really tough spot. Mm -hmm. No time to recall. No time to come back. No, no. Unsealed spell book for the Oriana as well. She has TP. Also means she could switch to other summoners. Elliptic opting to start blue this game. So Omo is forced to take another path. <laughs> what he decides to do. Change is upon us in game number four. But yeah, I'm really curious to see, especially in these uh, level six power spikes, or just team fights in general, 
the execution, like I say, has to be on the side of Sydney. If they can land everything together, yes, it looks beautiful on paper, but it requires the coordination. We've already seen once today the likes of uh, Bard interrupting absolutely everything. Oh, that's binding lands, name. and uh, that's going to be a bit of damage. That's great, Poke. First pot burned already for uh, Olaf, and not the position that Jinx wants to be in. Zoot also missing a ton of CS at the moment. Yeah, not a good look. Maybe feeling a little bit of pressure in uh, game four. Pop to help pot as well. Does uh, manage to clean up those caster minions, but the another binding, binding lands, lands once again. Yeah, absolutely. Cleanse had to be used there by Olaf. Burns it very early on. That trap from Caitlyn was uh, right there and. If he ate that trap, that was going to be a lot of damage. He was going to be forced to go home anyway, but potentially without the flash as well. So, smart cleanse. MLG with the cleanse as well, notably. They are carbons, so wanted to make sure that he is able to actually land those spell shields and those bindings and be the true support that is there to protect. Yeah, well, the thing about Morgana is um, she can only shield one person. And Galio does have that instant taunt flash. He's looking for it. So what this allows him to do Fog is uh, he's going to get caught here. Clash. They commit. They completely commit for it. He tanks two turret shots. But all said for none. Well, Emogen pops another gank. Yin Yan. Pretty all in here on Zarinus, but uh, nothing doing as he charges his way out of the decimating smash. A double victory for Imogen there. Burning a flash for two summoners, as well as buying time and resources, as that gave the rest of the squad of Auckland eyes in the sky, knowing where they are. Yep. Able to play aggressive and able to have no fear that they are the next bit of prey. Agreed. Big fat wave crashing into the tower there. That's probably going to be a few platings across to uh, Kedu. Oh, a few. One. <laughs> it is four minutes into the game. Maybe not even one, but certainly working his way towards <laughs> them. <laughs> it's like the salesman that's just like really trying to like downplay yeah. it. Like I'll just get, just take it off my shop floor. <laughs> I just don't want it anymore, please. I know, picking up his own blue for once. He's gonna go home. Olaf has based one time already, but he's only six CS behind, so only about a wave that he missed. Not the end of the world. Yeah, has gone for the refillable potion as well. Really feeling the pain that Morgana's able to dish out, not to mention what Caitlyn can do from the, the shrub as she uh, jiggle picks it. Yeah, Caitlyn still has um, a regular pot remaining as well, so Kedu and uh, Email can stay in this lane for uh, forever, more or less. Well, both junglers looking to go power farming mode right now, with Sejuani still taking a slight lead. Binding is duked. Just a rocket mode, clearing out some of these creeps. Both junglers, Hecarim is a funny one where he really does want six, but he can definitely gank beforehand. Absolutely. As uh, I think Serenus might be in a bit of trouble here. Gets the charge Sejuani forward. passive. Pretty the flash. Evil to, easy to proc. The stun. It's time to respond. Hang on. Well, we turn our attention to the bottle lane. Of course it's the bottom lane carbon. That is where all first bloods happen. The Observer juked us in the top lane. We look bottom, but top gets a kill too. The map is lit up blue. Omo and has Omo. ghosted in. He's looking for Yin Yan, but unfortunately... I ah, sorry, no ghost. It was just the uh, devastating charge, but it ran out before he was able to find anybody, so he's going to have to turn around and find some creeps to farm. Another binding land, and Olaf has just been eating these all game. Walks forwards. This is... Bit scary Heal right is now. available for Kedu. Takes a tower shot. Throwing this. Needs to oh. get this one. Does Kedu live? The turret. Oh my gosh. That trap. There's, There's no, no flash. Way. There's no way. He gets the he flash gets out as well. The disengage is impeccable. And that is heartbreaking if you are on the side of uh, you, Sid. Omo is coming in. He's ghosting. No He's going to clean up. That's one. You're joking. Is he looking for the seconds? <laughs> <laughs> the raging bull picks him up with the Ornhorn. horn. The first proc does it, and uh, if they got away safely there, that was going to be absolute disaster. Zarinas had burned the TP, not able to pick up any kills, 
As the counter TP comes down, it's not all said and done just yet, though they start off by looking for Olaf, who does survive for arguably longer than he should have, as Elliptic's in the back line, no ultimate now, does land, Omu looking to try and run away, but with no mana, no ghost, no chance, gives Sion the double kill, and it bounces back and forth like a yo-yo, looking so, so bad for Sydney, then suddenly good, and then suddenly bad again. Yeah, Imogen finding his way into the bottom lane somehow. We haven't, uh, we haven't looked at mid for a while, but the fact that the, the, the gold lead is, I mean the CS lead rather, is only going to be five once this wave gets cleared. My suspicion is that Zoot is probably getting shoved out and Imogen is having some time to roam on a champion that really shouldn't be able to. Okay, he's having fun in this uh, bottom lane for the meantime. May finally satisfy your cravings. No pun plating. intended. He does get the plating. He does. Five or so minutes after I said he would <laughs> get a multiple. <laughs> but uh, you're the prophet. Yes, he you picks one it. up eventually. That was uh, I don't know. That was a crazy play to survive the first time from Kedu and yeah. uh, an email. I really thought they were dead to rights, and uh, somehow they made it work. Omo is on his way. That's a double flash. This is really disastrous right now. As the devastating charge comes across, look for one. Kedu's the focus. And they completely disengage off the back of that. In terms of wall control, um, definitely in favor of the side of Sydney. You're looking at pretty much the entire river lit up red right now. So Auckland completely in the dark, having not only lost their star AD carry, looking to go full damage control. It's a weird game, this one. It's a bit of a weird one. It's, uh, it's very close. It's probably the closest we've had so far in the early game. Most of the early games have been blowouts, but uh, a lot of action once again on the bot side of the map. This time, no team really having a huge advantage. I mean, it's a little less than 1k in the lead for uh, Mercy of Auckland, but not a super relevant lead. Not a mix of leads, and it's a deceiving one, because if you were to try and read the map right now, you would argue that Auckland are ahead uh, in this bottom lane, but then you look at just the amount of pressure or the amount of blind courage that they have to make these sort of plays because once again you just look at that minimap there is just not a single blue ward extremely defensive warding out of the uh the auckland side i assume that's just because they haven't replaced those pinks yet none left in the inventory but uh yeah up until about two seconds ago ooh. okay guiding lands again which means cantos feels the need to move forward Forces the trade so that they can't just poke Olaf on the Jinx again. They didn't have Flash, and they didn't have 6 as well, so the all-in wasn't going to be the case. But MLG has now unlocked level 6, beating Kantos to the pinch. And they look to try and get aggressive, as you can see her uh, pushed up on the minimap there. A wet noodle fight still going on in top lane. Elliptic. Poking his head into the Dragon Pit. Looks like he started it. Or Drake, a very strong Drake for the lane phase, I think. Mm -hmm. Of all the Drakes taken first, when you take Water Drake first, you are the most likely to win. Mm -hmm. That was uh, that reading that stat at the end of last year, so not sure whether it's still the case, but it makes logical sense to me that you know when you the earlier you pick up that extra sustain, the more relevant it is. So. Sustain tends to be the name of the game, unless you're playing Burst when it's not. <laughs> Well, first beat sustained, though. Exactly. So my argument is completely unraveled. But nonetheless, they do pick it up. Ten minutes into this game, and no credit where credit's due. Imogen, despite being pretty immobile, is still looking for those roams, and he's always beating Zoot to the punch. Yeah, I think what we found is just a bit of a skill disparity there. Imogen constantly able to find priority, um, despite, you know, pressure in the mid lane, and he's just shoving that wave in. Moving out of lane, poking his head in the river, seeing what he can do. Sometimes just not being in vision is enough, you know. For us as spectators, it's easy enough. We have God vision and we can just say, yeah, he didn't roam. He just left lane and walked immediately back. But for the enemy team, you, know, you need to call that Azir is Mia and you don't know where he's going. You don't have any picks in the river. They dreaded spot. backseat gaming. It's, uh, it's a problem. The yeah, ult did get used there, so I think um, Emogen tried to do a shroom shuffle of short sorts. 
assume a shuffle of shorts. <laughs> uh, but uh, the Zoot Flash did get burned while we weren't watching, so I assume it was on target. Yan Yan, yeah. working on that plating. Oh, plating's here. And he's just got to get some gold, add it to the bank. This gold lead is uh, slowly stretching just through CS and platings. Small advantage, both top and bot. Mid lane virtually uh, identical once uh, Zoot claims these. Yep. So we'll see what the next play is. feel like uh, everybody's just uh, taking a breather at the moment. Mm -hmm. Trying to figure out what's our win condition again. What's the priority? What lane am I supposed to gain? What am I supposed to do after I push away? Alt tabbing. Yeah. <laughs> Onto Reddit. How do I Shaking play? Shaking Facebook. Yeah, that's the one. Getting those likes, getting those follows. What building that brand. These two guys have really just been at it for... How long have we been doing this now? How long have we been on four the truck for? Three yeah. hours? Four games? Four hours? Yeah, a Safe. fair bit of time. They've been, they've been at it for four hours, just not killing each other, but trading. You know what? I think it's the 400 IQ play. They're just giving us a demonstration of what erosion is. Ah. You know, just slowly grinding away at each other. Erosion is a really good term, I think, for uh, what they're doing. I quite so like it. Alt lands. It does indeed. The collapse is dead. The Oriana response with her ultimate doesn't really do too much, but it does at least prevent Elliptic from going any further forward. But the kill pressure idea was there. Was the a execution lot of damage. wasn't all that, though. Uh, I mean, since Wani ult landed, there's not really many other skill shots they have. Unfortunately, Emogen, I don't think he had his ult up yet from the last gank, so he's missing a tiny bit of damage. Probably yes. 300 or so at this stage. But uh, no nonetheless, picking up some more platings. Pings are going out, and it's interesting to see that the priority is still on bot lane despite no objective being there to fight over. They are still so, so focused on getting this turret. And you can understand why. Get this turret down, do the swap, then they start to go for the control of that uh, Rift Herald, which for yeah. Omo has been his number one priority, but even him being hesitant tells you the state of this game. Yep, and this is um, just a bit of what Caitlyn does. I mean, she's not supposed to do it against Jinx, but uh, Caitlyn definitely wants that first tower, definitely wants to be able to move between uh, the lanes. Probably going to go top now. This tower is also not long for the world, as we see Yin Yan yet again trying to engage. See where the Zarinus, yep, he's ulting also. There's the Brittle, and... Okay. Well, that was interesting, fight. but there's no time to even stop and think as Omo jumps in. Omo does work because the orb is on his head, and he goes spin to win. Picking up a nice little kill there on to Morgana. But I suppose, if anything, uh, Carbon, this does force a hard reset of let's re-establish the lanes. Yep. You're dead. Yep. Uh, small little swing back in the favor of Yusid. I mean, they did lose that bot tower in a macro sense. I sort of saw uh, I saw Kedu facing, moving to top, breaking that tower, then perhaps moving to mid and breaking another, but they opt into that blue contest and four people there means death for email. At the same time, Zarinas picks up a solo kill in a tank matchup, so game maybe not entirely over as a TP comes through. Zarinas has TP also. Caitlin is top lane, bear in mind, so this is a four-man engage. Three men engage if, uh, if you can actually count, but they're looking to try and force this fight regardless. They do get their Olaf. There's the binding. Does he have flash? No flash, and that is destroyed as well. Oh, Galio Walt. He's, He's going to fly to a mate, and he gets himself out of harm's way. Yeah, interesting choice by um, Zarinus not to follow with the TP. Instead, opting to shove the mid wave in. He's now going to move top of collector wave, but uh, that was Olaf's flash, and that's not how you want to lose it. The tower really looked like it should have been theirs, but teammates not around, and Kedu on the other side of the map is going to do what Olaf couldn't, and that is take tier Second one tower. Second turret gone. Third turret gone. All tier ones established now. And this, I feel like, brings us back to game number one, where the pace has slowed on down. Auckland weren't under really that much pressure, and were able just to play the map. They were just able to gain macro yeah. control, and just slowly chip away at the resources that Sydney had available to them. Yep. League of Legends at its most simple is when your bot lane wins and you can just move your number advantage around the map in order to take objectives. See, uh, they're trying to gank the Scion. 
He does have ult, but as long as they're standing in front of him, he can't ult away. However, Flash will allow him to do that as he drifts down the river and goes back to base for repairs. Pings, however, are furious here from Sydney, maybe saying, look, now is our only chance to try and force something like this. Given that these members are back away, we need to pick up something, otherwise we slowly just bleed and just passively lose this game, which is never a, a pretty sight to watch. Yeah, or is it to cast? they're getting pushed off at 2v4 because they know that Caitlyn and Nazir are on the way. They're doing their best. Zarinus with the knock-up. There's the Raging Ball coming across. How much value can that one find as it goes forward? It goes backwards. There comes the horses to the Wombo combo that we were discussing as Oriana finds a little bit of value right oh. there. Looking to take down Kedo, and yes, it does. That's a double kill. That's a triple kill, actually, for a Hecarim. But they do find a response with Siren picking up one. They take out the Jinx. Both AD carries off the ball. Mid lane is still surviving, and only one jungler. Who else but Omo? Omo and that Hecarim just putting in work. He has the Triforce completed, and... They managed to kill Kedu with the Orianna ult. Vivian, extremely tanky at the moment. The problem is when you can't die, but you do do damage, that does present a problem. And, uh, I mean, I will say that was a pretty even fight. It was a lot closer than I expected it to be. Gold lead, back to 3Ks. We see the replay here. Desperate to finish off this Herald. Drag it into the corner, but... Uh, they opt into the team fight. Sitwani ult misses. Emajun is pretty far away, not able to deal damage, but just watch Omo. He just auto queues his way around this team fight. Kedu falls down. Kedu falls down. And then it's uh, time to escape. And fortunately for Yusid, Zia had no mobility left. He did Yin Yan. So Rifta has been started up. My only concern here, though, is it feels a little bit like University of Sydney's composition is. Rather ultimate reliant, hence a little bit of hesitation to try and re-engage in a very, very similar situation. The charge forward, the taunt to follow up, the teleport coming in as well to try and pick off MLG. Does Locking land on to Kedu in no a bit of trouble. Does manage to get himself out of harm's way. We do see Sion coming in from the flank, driving by as the transformer that he can be. The fight is rather split, however, as you've got two, or actually three members of Auckland, now to be four, taking on Zarinus. Now they may find Zoo as well. Yin Yan actually soaking on four. So both bruises do whatever they oh, can. But the turnaround by Zoo is fantastic. Omo gets another. Omo gets the double and a shutdown for good grace. And can Yin Yan's cuddly bear clone do anything before it falls on down? No, it cannot. We talk about ulti priorities. They come back, they do work. Omo and this Hecarim is making them work for it. And uh, he's going to survive that dive as well. So picking up the uh, Azir and surprise you really didn't want to have to pay for this turret they were willing to give up anyway just like that that gold deficit completely evened out another turret the second easily taken on down and they may just start to pull ahead in this game now fighting themselves a new mentality a bit of positivity that's sorely required the replay here and um surprising to see them play so aggressively but I mean, Omo is just so strong. You see him coming in with a Hecarim ult at the tail end of this fight. There's a lot of poke here. The Sichuani ult unfortunately misses, and Sion ult was used to get into the fight, so he doesn't actually have it for combat. And sort of a front line off here. Who can kill whose tank quicker? But the Oriana ball doing a lot to zone. And oh. we see, oh, that was a monster Ori ult. Meaty damage. I didn't catch that while the fight was happening, but uh, Zoot took him four games, but he lets him know. Hey, I'm here too. I do deeps. A lot going on in that team fight, but uh, breaking it down like that, it just showcases exactly what it was designed to do. And uh, if that's not a, a demonstration of team fighting, then I'm not too sure really what is. 12 kills now to seven. Kedu in that weird spot, I suppose, of, well, I'm in the mid game, I've fallen off a little bit. I need to now still scale into that later stage where I can one to two shot you from afar without any of those armor penetration items. You saw why it was such a tall order when it came to the uh, the battle of the bruisers. Yeah, well, I mean, both of these tanks are, are super fed. They're both really strong. Um, Scion is one item. He's, I mean, he has the completed Frozen Fist versus the, uh, the components on the side of Serenus, but Vaughn is just so tanky early in the game as we see another team fight erupt. It does indeed. Starts off there with Orn, Sion looking to try and get whatever he can done to try and prevent his teammates from falling on down. Olaf is going to be the one that picks up that kill. Yin Yan, the sacrificial lamb, if you will. 
team does decide to stick around. Fight. I mean, they've traded one for O, but I think Omo is half health, and he's just telling the guys, like, look, if I'm not fed, we can. I mean, if I'm not healthy, we can't win. So, yeah, Omo playing very, very uh, dragonly the now. Man. Omo's circling around for the flank, though. You can see him uh -oh. behind the squad. He has. He's got the ghost. The ghost as well. Oh, and there's half of Emelk's health. I mean, what can you do? <laughs> you stop, you stare, and he's just gone. Just die, I suppose. That's what you can do. And uh, you said it just completely turned this game around. Looks like they're looking for more. Omo charging his way through the jungle. He's a man on a mission, I'll tell you that much. To the base. Ekarim just so strong at this point of the game. A fed Hecarim in the mid game is. There's really, there's so little counterplay to his E, and it just does so much damage. But he's also, yeah. he's tanky. He has healing from Spirit of Dread on his W, as well as the Conqueror uh, on his pass. Uh, well, uh, as his rune, rather. Yep. See, uh, Spam Pigs on the Baron. What I was just going to say, uh, if you're looking at the side of you, Sid, they have literally every tool at their disposal. They have a Mountain Drake to take it down quicker. They have the superior team fight in that pit. They want Orianus these Wombos and a small over. spot. They have to check this out. They have to contest. Azir does it extremely quickly, but uh, I think that ball is going to be enough to dissuade them. They don't know how far the heck is. He does have uh, home guard, of course. So. But credit where credit is due. Yeah. Auckland weren't just going to sit down and sort of uh, roll over. They were saying, look, we are going to try and draw your attention. We will uh, force an agenda of some sort or maybe try and find somebody getting a little bit too creative with their positioning. But you said, as, as mentioned previously, in such a fantastic spot for Baron Control, and play yep. passively until they need to. Yeah. Uh, no, look, it was worth a shot. I think you're right. Um, no point going quietly into that cold night. Uh, they just had a big team fight at the Dragon, and that's usually a tell, you know, for all you budding players out there. If you fight on one side of the map, it's pretty safe to assume that that's where all of their wards are. So they try to rush the Baron, but unfortunately, Ori with the heads up play, chuck her ball over the wall, and now Baron. Control established. Top tower broken as we... These two just can't help themselves. <laughs> Normally when you see a tank matchup, what you see is both tanks proxy each other. Mm -hmm. One tank all the way up one end of the lane, just clearing the wave. Other tank all the way up the other end of the lane, clearing that wave as it comes, because they know there's no point fighting. But these two, they just let the wave do whatever it's doing, and they fight in the river instead. Lane manipulation is a concept that they maybe skipped at school. Out of the window. Obviously not teaching that at neither Uni of Auckland or the Uni of Sydney. <laughs> well, still, a healthy lead is starting to uh, be developed here by Sydney. Double the kills and uh, double the amount of money they had beforehand in terms of a 2k lead. Yep. Okay, bit of Baron control wrestled back there, but uh, it's going to be short-lived because once this mid lane gets shoved in, UC is going to walk straight back in there. They have pinks in their inventory. They're going to clear those out from uh, Uni of Auckland. So pressure back on the Kiwis. Mm -hmm. At what point do you face check the vision? For how long can you gamble in the dark? At this stage, you're really looking to try and claim some bounty. Uh, my eyes would have to be on Omo. Uh, it's pretty, pretty juicy horse. Yeah, but at the same time, like I was saying, he has Merc Treads, Cinder Hulk. He has healing from Conqueror, healing from his W. He has the stopwatch as well. I mean, this yes, is his game right now. They could potentially CC lock him to death. But assuming that he doesn't face check a brush or get caught somehow, it's going to take them a long, long time to deal with this Hecarim. And I fear that uh, until they get. Couple more items on the Caitlyn. Mm -hmm. I mean, he doesn't have any armor, so if he steps on a trap, that's got to do deeps, but. I don't know. Ball certainly in uh, Omo's court. I'm sure he's well aware of that. No better example than that dragon fight before, where he decided to stay quite passively behind that wall, saying, Look, I'm half health. No need to force a fight. It doesn't really play to our strengths. No. Omo trying to force some vision control, but his teammates are nowhere near him. Gets away with it. This is that point in the game, a bit of a lull, if you will, where you're passively farming. You're looking to try and get any CS you can, pick up, you know, uh, you know, jungle camps, buffs. But essentially, 
painstakingly just establish Baron ward control. Yeah, yeah. The game right now is really about vision control. Uh, as we see it all in, Galio ult coming also. Oh, Omo jumping into the back line. Ellipse looking to try and do whatever she can, but it's not going to be enough as Imogen is forced to back away. Omo is actually going to get uh, absolutely shot. deleted. Fantastic shot down there from Imogen. Can they find any more though? Yin Yan taking on the world and back as she flashes away. Gets the shield, dodges that. Says, it doesn't bother me. I am not phased. And, well. In the end. That's bounty that they definitely, definitely needed. In the end, it's one for zero. <laughs> we just spent a minute talking about how impossible it was to kill Hecarim, but uh, he just wants to run in. 2v5. Ult forwards into the enemy team, then uh, yeah, he'll die, I suppose. Kedu, he does do damage if you step on a trap, so. Looks like this may be the third Water Drake that uh, UOA are looking for. Emogen, I mean, he, Azir does a truckload of damage if he's allowed the opportunity to deliver it, and. I don't know, we'll see the next team fight. Uh, Omo has to play it better if he wants to win. I think the takeaway from that fight, though, especially considering some of the skills, is how many had to be burned to make that, to facilitate that fight going in their favor. Look at all the flashes that were used. Every single one. And you compare that with Sid, you know, the only one being that of Olaf, given the pressure. You sit on a really good spot to try and just force their agenda, flash taunts, yep. flash balls, flash, flash anything, really. Entirely true. A lot of time when you're uh, playing pro lol, you're timing summoners, and even when the game is, uh, even when you're a little bit behind, if you have all sums and the enemy has no sums, that generally indicates that you will win the next fight. If you're a, uh, if you can flash out of important ult but the enemy can't, you should then win the team fight. Two man Baron start. They are doing it pretty quick. They do have that mountain, but MLG. He melds, he spots it, 3k. The teleports are coming on in. 1500 and counting, 700. Omo does get it, Smite comes across. Looking to try and force that fight even further though. Ola finding one, Sion finding a response. That's going to be the ADC out of the fight. And Caitlyn is free to do what she does best. Poke from afar, utilize that range. Can she get Omo? Is he out on oh. a Tara? <laughs> there is no trap. The only trap is that he stuck around too long to fight that space galactic horse. He's just so fast. You could see Kedu, he one-shot more or less the Oriana, which is huge to mm -hmm. have your Caitlyn. 1v1, a 2-0-9 Ori. Uh, massive play out of Kedu there. And he desperately wanted to help his team out. He knows he's Caitlyn. He has the rapid fire cannon. One or two autos here or there really can change the tide of a fight. And it's one he nowhere to be seen. Omo finally smites Baron, but oh, Olaf dying at the start of this fight. Just watch Kedu at the bottom of your screen, how Kedu. close that was. And uh, I mean, really, this fight would totally would have been completely different if Oriana survived. And Kedu, he just keeps turning around for an auto attack, but Omo just tramples his face. And that Omo. really has to be the key concept, though, for, for you, Sid, right? Is we have to make these skills find value right there and then. We can't wait for any follow-up. We can't wait for the refreshing of these cooldowns to come about because you saw quite point blank there. If it doesn't one-shot you, you will lose. Yep. Yep, entirely true. Omo trying to uh, do something to Yin Yang, but he's losing the 1v1, let alone if his team collapses. You see it do have the Baron, so there is the opportunity to siege an outer turret here. Armor oh, penetration has now been picked up by both marksmen. We've got the upgraded Infinity Edge on Olaf, so with that lethal tempo, we'll do a ton of damage if we can get a few rocket rocket procs off. Cyanol comes out. This is a team fight. Elliptic wants to force that agenda, does have the ultimate, will use it right now. Everything getting pumped into Kantos, and he gets deleted. Hecarim on the flank, nowhere to be seen. Same for Zoot, they were both caught in mid lane. No the fight flash. continues. They're looking to try and take down this one. They're looking for Olaf if they can. Desire, Ooh. but the bomb from afar saying, thank you very much, that's movement speed, that's disengage. Meanwhile, and that is more lane. time for Zoot to do what he does best and just split push. Team fight still going on, but Olaf almost dead, but he kills Emogen, trades one for one. Omo's made it back and Redemption going on down, double Caitlin dies. That heals, damage, everything that they can throw at this one. Still fighting under a tier one tower, mind you. 
as the battle of the bruises continues, this time with a little bit more items in their inventory. Zoot says, keep fighting. It does not bother me because I'll pick up the inhib. I'm doing everything I can. The casters, they didn't believe in me. They said that I need to make an impact. He's made an impact. He's picked up an inhib. He's going to go for the Nexus. And they're looking to give us, Carbon, the full best of five. Five games. That's what you want in a final. Uh... Auckland not able to close it out. Elliptic doing his best Nexus defense at the end there, but unfortunately not able to save the game. Huge performance out of the jungler from uh, Usid, as well as the mid laner. Um, Omo, godlike on the Galactic Horse. Finished the game 10 and 3, something along those lines. And um, will we get a fifth blue side, <laughs> red side? We've had the same sides every game so far. I feel like they've gone down that path for so, so long you got to do it, right? They have to. you got to do it. If they don't, would you not feel like you've just jinxed it? Oh, if you were to change <laughs> and lose, you're on the plane, you're going, you're flying home all the way back to Auckland, yeah. looking at each other. Why it's a tough, did I tough say flight. it? Why did I suggest it? Why did I, why did I agree? We would have won. Blue is my favorite color. That's why I'm wearing blue right now. <sighs> do, do you think this was planned? I didn't even know University of Auckland were blue. But regardless, uh, without the awkward shenanigans, that will take place here as Carbon just looks blankly black, into that camera. We're going to jump to a break for the final Auckland. game in this best of five series to see who is better, Sydney or Auckland. Rising Stars in 10.
Welcome back for the final time this night. Yes, that is right. It's a best of five, and it's gone to a full best of five. It has. Five games. It really has been a bit of a clown fiesta with fun, action, bizarre, and uh, awe-inspiring moments from certain players from game one through to what we should now be looking to see in game number five. But this is the Oceanic University Tournament. A big, big one at that. And what a better way than for me to symbolize who you can cast your vote for than with some cute little plushies. I feel like it should be this way around. It should be. It should have been on your side as well. You've just shown no patriotism. But University of Auckland are two. University of Sydney are two. Back and forth it has been. It hasn't been a clear we've gone to three. Oh, sorry. No. Well, if they've gone and to three, it would have been uh, all said and done. But it hasn't been a yeah. full we're going to two reverse sweep situation. It's been pretty yin and yang. Yeah. And uh, even last game was a comeback victory by uh, by Usid. So... Mm. Yeah, curious to see what happens next. I mean, we're going to get the same sides yet again. <laughs> Five games of uh, UOA on blue and yep. UCID on red. So, I don't know. I guess both teams thinking, well, we've won two on this side of the map. Might as well stick around. See whether there are many draft changes. I don't feel like there will be. I feel like last game was close enough that both teams will say, no, we could have won that. Um, we can do that again. Yeah, I'm trying to think of problem champ. Maybe Hecarim. Hecarim was pretty strong. Uh, I could see that getting banned. But other than that, there's that Nico again. As we get the champ select remix. I feel almost if it's a little bit superstitious at this stage. Final game. Both teams arguably now under the nerve, under the gun. If you change anything too drastically now that you may not have prepared for, you are going to be going home tonight beating yourself up. Yeah, you don't want to be the team that changes and loses. There we go. But at the same time, ah, it's just so weird. How does this happen, you know? Like, maybe unless red side is... No, because the same team has been red side the whole time. So just your way is just like, nah, blue side's OP. It's like, nah, red side's OP. Stubborn in their methods and stubborn in their bands to a degree. You see the Hecarim. So that's Rakan switched out. We'll see whether they follow up with the Rakan. They don't. So Kaiser still taken off the, ca the table. I wonder if Kedu just can't play it. Maybe he just... Maybe he hasn't been playing much LOL recently. I assume he can play it. I don't know. In any case, Rai's taken off the board. Ezreal taken off the board. So... All the most impactful champs so far today have been taken out of the game. Yeah, I'd agree with that, that point. Where pick is. Picking. Picking. Thinking. Picking. Five seconds. Rakan taken away. Interesting. I'm not a big fan of picking champions away from enemy teams. I this understand not mm. wanting to give them Zaya Rakan, but you haven't shown any propensity to play Rakan. 
Yumi's not banned. Why do they never go back to the Yumi? Can you answer me that? I'll have to. I'll speak some uh, some Kiwi language to them. Bit of a bit of a tough language that one. I I want to follow that pathway that you're um, you're thinking about this Rakan. I'm not a big fan of just picking away picks for the sake of it, yeah. and then putting together what I like to call a uh, ugly jigsaw puzzle of like, well, that is good for you good and that's good for you. Yep. Um, but hey, it actually really sucks as a five man for us, but hey, at least you don't have your power picks. Yeah. It's a easy trap for players and teams to fall into. Zyra. What on earth? That must have been a mistake, right? Even Omo's got his hands up late. <laughs> what? That's not real. Zyra is a support. I mean, she's traditionally, she was a, she was always supposed to Once be a mid lane a champ. But uh, she's always been played support, but they have the Rakan already. Uh, ah, was that a misclick? I really want to see the Auckland player cams to see whether they're... I mean, watching Omo laugh is one thing, because he's thinking the same thing we yeah. are. What on earth is this Zyra? Yeah. What are you away saying? Was that a mistake? Is someone upset? Or are really playing Zyra blind pick mid? The Get reaction the from the camp so far looks pretty neutral. Yeah. It doesn't seem to be giving away any kind of... Uh... I mean, that is not a mistake you want to make in Game 5 of the Unity LoL Championships. You've been playing in this comp for two months. You're finally here. You're in Sydney. You've flown all the way across. You've got your blue side. You're in Game 5. You're ready to go. And you go, whoops. What other champion starts with Z that maybe he was trying to click? Z. Potentially, Zillion, also both mid lane champs. Not great blind picks, but Assassin's nonetheless. Big smile on the face of uh, E Mel G. <laughs> how many different ways I can butcher his name. <laughs> so he obviously uh, isn't worried. No, this has to be something they prepared. This yeah, has to be something unique, like something starting off the series crazy, ending the series crazy. We, you yep. would have seen a referee decision by now if it had been. <laughs> maybe it's a kill lane or something. Maybe it's maybe there's no AD carry. They're going to play Zyra Rakan. I don't know, man. This is some crazy stuff. I mean, look, if you have some cheese ready for game five and it works, you're a genius. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if it's going to be a, uh, it doesn't work. a winner at that, I'm just trying to telegraph some of these bands as to if that is actually the case. Can we get a vote in Twitch chat? Can I get one for this is a real pick? And can I get two for meme pick, a.k.a. misclick? Let me know. Slide into his DMs. Hecarim, Jarvan, Seeing and a lot Olaf of ones. all taken off. Hmm. I've forgotten already, though. Was one? Uh, which one was one? My, it's my memory for you. It random Zyra. We've got a lot of ones. I'm assuming that one was the Zyra one. Even I'm trying to think right now what you said. I just yeah, I really don't two. know. But uh, look, I'm saying, <laughs> I'm saying, was one real pick? I'm seeing a lot of real picks. Two was mean pick. True. Thank you, chat. Uh, so one was real pick. Everyone thinks it was a real pick. Okay, Zyra mid. Here we go. Uh, I really don't know what, like... Is it, what? what? And what? a Vigor. Ah. Okay. <laughs> um, I am scratching okay. my head right now. Uh, let's do it again, guys. Can we get one more? Can I get one? Okay, write this down so I don't forget. <laughs> one for meme... No, that's the wrong... <laughs> Even you're confusing yourself ah. now. One, One for, for real, real pick. pick and two for meme pick. Chat, let me see it. Are you a one or are you a two? Rate yourself. Catching a lot of ones. Couple twos. Couple people think it's a meme, but a lot of people think it's real. So we've got Jungle Zyra and Top Lane. What on earth? And then these guys are going to... Last couple games, these guys, they don't stop swapping until... The 22nd mark, so... Because um, I'm thinking maybe we have a situation where it's Vayne top, like, just to try and really spin a spanner in the works, but... So they've got 10 seconds until they finished swapping. They're hanging on. Five, four, three, two, one, and that's it. Locker this in, Eddie. 
So we've got Kedu playing Cleanse Zyrobot with Rakan. Vayne mid. I think that's Emogen doing some sort of hand warmer prayer <laughs> to the LP gods. We've got Jungle. <laughs> no. We've got Jungle Skana and Yin Yan with the Vega top. Well, uh, if this I is guess, cheese, then I have been given it a lesson. I don't on know, how we guys. Do I don't know. Vayne mid into Ori seems not great. Zyra <laughs> AD carry. Look, let's not doubt it, okay? The Kiwis, there's something in the water. Mm -hmm. There's something going on over there. Mm -hmm. They brought it across the sea to Australia, their own brand of uh, League of Legends. Let's see it, guys. Let's see what you've got. Well, I'll tell you what, if they win with this composition, not only will they have won the competition, but I'm sure they've won a ton of brand new fans. There's something to be said for winning your way. Absolutely. You know? Winning your way. Hang Nobody on. Nobody likes a meta slave. But hang on, let me. Uh, I think we've been totally boozled because Vagar's going to go mid. We've got TP Vane top. Okay, so that already makes a lot more sense. That makes more sense, as I mentioned. Okay. Yeah. That's already making more sense. Are you with me, guys? But then. I mean, Zyra AD carried. Uh, they think there's no excuse for that. Oh, wait. Funnel Zyra. Is it? No, it's not. Okay, never mind. I thought, so there's a thing with Sonataric uh, where you pick two supports and one support funnels the other. And I thought for a moment, maybe they've got something along those lines, but they don't because Zyra just has the Doran's ring. So she's just going to take CS. Um, okay. He's trying to break the wheel when they reconstruct it as a square. He's trying to break the wheel. Potentially. I don't know. Let's see what she does. She's got to get into lane early to set up her plants. She's not doing that. What I will say, though, about this vein being played in the top lane, based on what we've seen so far, about it being, quite rightly, an assassin meta, with them both going for tanks and just bashing against each other, doing yeah. pretty much nothing and proxying, the vein will do a lot of work. That Especially is true. Especially if you focus on, um, on your W, looking to go for those silver bolts, maxing that very first, and, you know, or not the most aggressive in that regard, definitely will take a lot of punishment. You're not wrong, but at the same time, uh, at the same time, a little Emogen has been playing mid lane and is now playing top lane. <laughs> Look, okay, it was an idea. <laughs> Don't call me out just yet. There's no. a lot to playing top lane that is different to playing mid lane that I think a lot of mid laners don't maybe recognize. And maybe Emogen is a monster vein in solo queue, I don't know. Can't say I'm super familiar with his top vein, but maybe that's his off roll. You know, when he doesn't get mid, he's like, all right, fine. I'll play vein top, lol. I'm still going to have fun. Should have given me mid. Yep, yep. I don't know if he's rude like that, but I'm assuming someone who plays vein top is. You've just portrayed somebody on the internet and you've just, just ruined his I life. I know these people. I've seen these I've seen these vein tops. They've been in my game. <laughs> I know what they're like. Kantos threatening the taunt. Nothing doing. Kedu. Keeping up at CS. He's running out of mana though, and I feel like that is pretty important for a spell based champion to have mana. Well, given that the whole composition relies on putting out poke and trying to establish a lead, without that, they are nothing but rise auto attackers, which we've seen. Yeah, I'm not sure meaning. if their composition really has any theme or plan or goal. I look at these champions and I think there's nothing that these do well together, you know? Like, it's all just a bit... This is what I feel like playing in Game 5 of the Uni LoL Finals. Mm -hmm. I've been working towards this, but... LoL, let me pick Zyra, though. On the biggest moment possible. You, but you know what? At the same time, I was saying it before... Oh, oh flash! Oh, this is big! A flash on forward from Rakan, looking to try and make something happen. Can Kedu land the plant with the root? No, she cannot. That was... A fantastic gank if Kedu had killed one more creep before it happened. If he had that level 3 root and could have rooted off the knockup, Olaf would have been in a lot of trouble. But unfortunately, he was only level 2, not able to follow up the CC, and Olaf just costs him his flash, but gets away with his life. Yeah. MLG, though, burning a lot to try and force that engage and try and find some early game aggression to try and justify the means of what this composition is currently presenting to us on the Rift, which is one that gets us scratching. 
It's definitely got uh, you pacing around right now, thinking, what on earth yeah. are my eyes watching? But regardless, these guys, they are... You know the trope, the uh, <laughs> unsolvable... As we see a gank in the mid lane, <laughs> Yin Yang beats a flash, but he lives. Like the unsolvable equation uh, from like Goodwill Hunting is like one film, but like, you know, the professor puts up an equation on the chalkboard, nobody yep. can solve it. Like the janitor rocks up and it's solved the next day and no one can believe it. I feel like... I feel like... Uni of Auckland, like, they've provided us the answer mm -hmm. to a question that was never asked. <laughs> like, like the janitor has, like, come in overnight, scribbled some nonsense on the chalkboard and left. The professor comes in the next day and is like, what on earth is this gibberish? What is this team comp that I've, been en <laughs> I've ended up with? Am I expected to comment on this? Um, and I feel like that's the position we are in now. Like, I'm watching this lane phase and I'm like, yeah, Vain Orn, uh... Max W first, I guess. Like, that's this a really in depth matchup analysis. Yeah, no, uh, it definitely feels like the meme of, you know, absolutely no one. Oh, hey, by the way, Vayne top, guys. Um, oh, a, a, a roll swaps too, don't, don't forget <laughs> yeah, that. And a roll swap. You know what? If it was not a roll swap, I'd be more forgiving. Because I'd be like, okay, this is something that Yin Yan has, you know, perfected. Uh, oh, hang Here on, we, we go, go in the top lane, Condemn Flash. Can Imogen get this one? He's going to tumble Ooh. forward, but he does not get it because First Blood does get sniped away by Omo, who had the flash forward to secure that auto attack that was surely getting queued up to land onto Tazarinus. But hey. That was sick, though. The I mechanics there from Imogen definitely knows how to play Vayne. So. And I feel like Vayne is one of those heroes, yes, has a weak early game, can find some bad strength. Yeah, good mid lane. We'll Ooh, definitely slow do lands. Stuff. Oh, that was a kill. I'm not sure if Elliptic is aware that his E just landed there, but a flash forwards would have meant Zoot was stunned and popped the full combo as a taunt lands. Or does land. Rakan look to uh, re-engage as well as a result. Kedu. Kedu throwing those Zyra auto attacks one after the other at Kantos, but uh, he's an AP champ, so didn't do a whole lot. It feels like two peacocks flapping their wings, you know, in the <laughs> wild, going, look, I can dash in. And he's like, I can do it. hey, I can me dash too. in too. Look at me. I'm, I'm really cool. Look at my animations, my particles. <laughs> yeah, and then chat's just like, okay, cool. Lol, oh, slow. Don't type that. That's me. <laughs> Mod's having a field day right now. <laughs> but, hey, on the flip side, as much as we're riding uh, University of Auckland here, I would like to say and reaffirm my original point. Hey, if you can win with a composition like this, with the setup you've done between player swaps and just outright oh, absolutely. character picks. This win will mean more than anything else. This is it's ultimate if you disrespect. Fantasize about playing pro lol. You know, like oh flash forward, plans. And that's gonna be the uh, Christmas trees in place nice. as well. The He's coming in from though. Zoot won't achieve Kane much, is but here the also. flank is there. Omo coming in. Elliptic goes one way, and Yin Yan goes the other. Both fighting a similar fate. Both put into the ground, and both forced to respawn in a few seconds. A couple of early kills onto the Kane. Heavy snowball in jungler. Kane is one of those junglers where, with kills, is an absolute menace, and without them, is relatively useless. Yep. But being two zero one at this point. Gonna get that uh, evolution pretty quickly, or transformation, I should say. Paints a pretty good picture for him. And almost definitely been scaling up as the series has gone on. We'll give him a bit of a hard time in the first few games, but after the last few performances, definitely uh, making a case for himself. Smites it away. No level six on the Skana, so no real threat. Can't use his flash. E, which is Crystalline Slash. Well, that's his Q. I can't remember which one he is. But uh, in any case, Crab goes over to Omo. Omo's going to clear his topside jungle, probably go home, complete his warrior enchantment, and is going to be a big threat. Root misses. Kedu. I mean, he's ahead in CS. Um, he's keeping this lane shoved in. He hasn't died. Flash is down, but uh, I don't know. By all metrics... Zyrobot not doing so badly. Not doing too badly. I suppose really the, the biggest talk point would be uh, what happens when they actually go for an ultimate engage. Um, yeah, I mean, if Root lands, Zyra does a truckload of da mm -hmm. uh, damage, but um, it's really it's it's really 
You don't want to fish with that root. Oh, that stun just that's clips him. Ooh, Elliptic, so, so close to have landed that E as well. What about the ultimate available oh, to try go. and force something to happen? Got. Emogen got the ulti available. Going to look to try and use that to try and dash away with the invisibility. Omo, no mana, no chance. Let's have red buff. Needs to try and get Whoa. it onto Imogen okay. to even find any value. But Imogen, very, very lucky. No flash, doesn't pay the price. Early boots too. Really smart pick up from the vein there. Yin Yan just keeps fishing for that stun because he knows that Zoot, he cannot spell book to cleanse. And uh, that Vega ult will one-shot Ori if she uh, tanks the QW. It's interesting because if I actually take my thought process back to that pick and ban phase, we saw the bans on a Hecarim on a Olaf as well as a Jarvan. So Disrespect from email. It's almost as if like they knew that this composition was so out of the meta, it was so wild, it's like, can we just take away as many hard engaging or just like, I can't stop this heroes? That's a really smart point. Um, I, I reckon they did because I think uh, Kedu's... Oh, hang on, this oh, Zyra going to do a ton of damage. That's Zyra Ult, that's a double knockup. Elliptic gets him up as well. Galio says hello, is it going to be for oh. anything? No, it's not really. Olaf running, gunning, doing whatever he can. Hang there on, comes the Orn and Orn says hello. Bashing once and bashing twice. Kantos with the last bit of his mana gets the taunt onto Elliptic. Pops the broken stopwatch. Looking oh, beautiful. Kedu. But it does not matter because Kedu says, I can play Zyra. It's not really an AD, but it does damage. And that is the advantage of playing a champion that people don't expect to play against. No one respecting the plant damage out of Zyra there. and It was disgusting. They just kept trying to re-engage. I think ultimately they trade one for one, but uh, that's not what you want to see happen. I mean, you're the proactive team. Zyra just so good at peeling back. Huge Rakanult from Emelg as well. And uh, I don't know, the Kiwi's turning it on in the bot lane. Look, there's a smile on my face right now, seeing what is unfolding on the rift right now. Elliptic, they have no vision from the side of Yusid, but he's going to go for this quite handily. He's got pressure from bot lane, pressure from mid. It's an Ocean Drake, which will just further push their agenda, which is sustain, control, let's win. And hey, you mentioned before Kedo having no mana. That'll help a fair bit. Uh, the Ludens, yes. Yes, having that lost chapter in there means that he's probably not going to want for mana for the rest of the lane phase. I imagine lane phase will end relatively soon. Or Summoner's Burnt means that there's plenty of opportunity for regression and... I don't know, man. Something about <laughs> these uh, serious picks. <laughs> Omo once again showing in the top lane. Let's see if Emogen has that fancy footwork. It's time to pop the ulti. Can you try and run in guard and tumble your way to victory? Are you too fast? Are you too furious? Or is the axe going to come from above? The execution is there. And it seems to me as if Omo's had one lane in mind all day long. And that has been Ooh. top lane. But bottom lane once again is the flashing Peacock Feather Show. As the ulti comes out, Kantos falls to flash away. And oh my, Elliptic was considering it for a second, but the damage you can see Ooh, there from Kedu the is, here. is disgusting. As the OT from Oriana comes from the flank on the river, there's the teleport coming in as well. Zoot gets to pick up onto MLG. And Yin Yang coming in a little bit too late to force any kind of response. Elliptic opting to aggress at exactly the moment that Zoot manages to make it into this lane, but uh, Kedu with the instant flash. Instant transmission at out of Oriana right Alt, and I think we might get a team fight uh, for some yeah, team for some, uh, tower platings. Almost coming in, Zoot with no ulti. Orn does, however, looking to try and force the agenda. Yin Yan there is low, doesn't have his uh, ability to try and find a kill just yet because he's rather low. Does go Ooh. for the ultimate, does not take out Zoot. There comes the ball, Olaf gets the kill, Kedo is deleted. He had no knockup, no chance to survive, no flash as well, actually bear that in mind. It is only a one kill trade. But uh, you said we're quite low, bear in mind. Aussies aren't done yet. All of a sudden, uh, I take a peek up at the scoreboard and I thought that Auckland were winning this game, but eight to three down, 2K is the gold lead. And Emogen looking for a uh, condemn, but doesn't throw it out. I mean, this Kane is nothing to scoff at, 4-1. Did I hear him transform? I don't think so, I think he... Uh, his icon will change when he does, but uh, this is an extremely strong cane. Rush the QSS, brilliant purchase there. Skana, not going to be able to do anything to him anymore. And uh, I don't know, ball's in uh, Auckland's court. You guys picked this meme shit. <laughs> Show us what it does. 
<laughs> there actually is no other way to describe it. I you pick this, demonstrate I, its qualities. I feel like that is the most accurate I can be. Okay. Got a death bush. And I check his there. Ulti, Wombo, dead, goodbye. And, uh, well, nothing really more to be said about that one. MLG uh, face check the bush. Ori ult does get burnt, but, um, I mean, you take it, you know. You take it. If I asked you before that kill, would you use this ultimate for a kill? You'd say yes. Always. You'd say yes. Cooldowns for kills is the name of the game. There's a problem here. And that is that the top lane vein is pretty much the same level as the bottom lane AD carry. And there's also an item behind, despite not having to trade with two people. Getting all the solo XP. Uh, that's a problem. That this, is a problem. The, the advantage of this top lane vein is that she gets super tanky because she gets the solo XP, you know. Yep. Ideally, you want her at that level 11 like Zarenus with a two level lead. And that the enemy AD carry has no uh, real choice in whether or not they get to win the fight. But the reality we found ourselves in is a Bilgewater Cutlass Vayne who's only one level ahead, but I'm, uh, I'm just waiting for Desire to ding 10 here because Vayne has to go back and pick up this bot wave. There's so much uh, pressure from the, the Kane in that top lane, really looking to try and shut down what this pick is looking to achieve, which was to shut down the Bruiser, uh, you know, set up that used to have been very rigid with. But as you mentioned, a vein without any items, a vein without any really strong early game. Well, if this game doesn't last that much longer, really a dead pick in the water. Regardless, you said still quite happy with their situation. Six kills up. Yes, they are down a Drake, but still a 3k gold lead in their name and map control still pretty, uh, pretty favorable for them as they go for a rotation of top lane looking to get a turret trade, but they are going to go for the recall. So maybe having other ideas in mind. Yeah, um, the Kiwis can take some heart from the fact that they have a couple of the uh, highest scaling champions in the game. Vega, basically the AP Nasus, his Q just keeps giving him AP as he uh, farms up and his ult will just do more and more damage. Vayne, also incredible scaling champ. Zyra, not the best scaling because she's so easy to kill, but in terms of damage, does Heaps of damage if she's able to get those plants down and land that ultimate. Taunt for taunt does force up the Feather Storm. And, uh, well. Fortunately, Omo's got that transform. And uh, he's reached his final form and he's ready to take some more names. Hang on. He's gone. Imogen, however, does find that one kill. That's very nice in the bottom lane, but the fight does still continue around this Baron Pit. Looking to try and go for the uh, suppression on towards Olaf, but the fight continues to the left-hand side. Can they go for Kedu? He's going to get executed as he goes underneath the tail, but Omo is just so disgustingly tanky at 5, 1, and 3 with all the items under his belt between the Merc Treads and the QSS, not to mention the uh, Hex Drinker as well. It just means that no matter what you pump into him, it's not going to uh, leave a dent. No massive team fight there from um, Yusid. They catch them trying to take Rift Herald. Liptic tries to re-engage. His ult actually got cancelled by uh, Olaf's ult. Olaf managing to uh, become untargetable just before the scorpion tail stabbed him through the head, which meant that uh, none of Kedu's damage was really relevant and they end up paying dearly for it. That may have been the team fight that uh, breaks the camel's back because that Rift Herald is going to be used to take a tower probably mid and I fear that once this map breaks open, yeah. it's going to be very difficult for uh, the Kiwis to hold the rest of their towers. To establish any kind of comeback potential, control, even just set up. Um, I feel if we sort of get ourselves into a situation where we see that eventuate, you're going to have very crazy, all or nothing, barren, barren all in calls. Yep. And uh, when you get to that kind of stage of the game, not a pretty sight, is what I would uh, no. say quite lightly. Take a quick look at the gold here. We do have a lead in the top lane. Uh, Emogen was solo split pushing the entire time that team fight happened, so... Understandable. Caught up in XP, got a CS lead. Massive gold discrepancy in the jungle and in the mid lane. Got most of the gold sits. I am surprised Zyra is not mm, further behind. She was only a couple hundred gold behind the Zyra. Um, 
But yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Let's see what happens, I suppose. The scoreboard is rather deceiving. 1-2-1 one, one versus 3-0 oh, and 2 of a bounty. Pretty even. Okay. Not what you would expect. MLG trying to sneak his way into the bush, but creep spot him. Imogen waiting for the wave. He's got nothing to buy, nothing to do, so instead of putting himself in a place where he might die, he just sits near his tower and waits for the wave to come in. Yeah, really looking to try and farm as quickly as possible to reach that power spike with the Ginsus. Get yes. that online, and um, suddenly you may find yourself able to justify running that pick. Just maybe. Probably not. But a man can dream. Bifteral going through mid lane, does get activated. It's going to break the first uh, out of turret. Let's give them some control. We've got a second charge off. It's going to be a bit oh, of damage. Beautiful. That finds out a lot of value. Mid tower broken now. Means that uh, with the mid priority that Zoot will be able to get, they'll be able to push their vision into the rest of the map. Hopefully take control of one side of the jungle if you're an Australian. Uh, you're a Kiwi yeah, fan. Not a good sign. Well, I'll tell you what. The, uh, the Kiwi plushie is currently on the floor. Where it I've, belongs. Um, I've lost a little bit of hope in the boys right now. You know, if you're lactose intolerant, this cheese is definitely not going down the tree. <laughs> 4K or just under is the difference. Omo just stacking that MR, not at all worried about the vein. Which is probably fair. Yeah. Hasn't been a, f a problem so far. No, has not been involved in a whole lot. And Spirit Visage, so good on uh, the Red Cane. Getting that extra healing from Q, W, and R makes him extremely frustrating to play against. But, uh, I don't know. I feel like I'm going to see something in the side lane from Emogen soon. He has that red buff. He needs to... Try and make something happen, because my worry is that otherwise he's just going to run away with it. That they are. I mean, looking at item-wise, uh, you do have the ghosts, the spectral shadows from uh, Vigar are inactivatable. Does have a little bit of mobility now with the frozen uh, hex gun. But for the most part, where does their initiation come from? It's like Ooh, it's very flash. reliant oh. on... Uh, on that Skyner trying to find a pick. They don't have the typical bruiser heavy composition that Auckland's been known for. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Omo doing some scouting. The, uh, what's that called? Shadow Walk, I think? Shadow Walk gives you a ton of vision. You get to see on both sides of the wall. Super useful ability when you're sieging. You just get to hop on over. Say good day. Have a little peek. But they can't hit you. Why would they at this stage? Still very, very scary with that score line. Anybody who sets well. his sights Ooh, on, they will hurt. die. That's going to be the ultimate there from Kedu, looking for a disengaging option. No root. Olaf goes for the uh, panic ult. It was probably warranted, because if that root hit him in the Zyra ult, would have been a lot of damage. But what this does mean is uh, a couple ults down, and we'll see whether they continue to contest this tower, because while they do have an Ocean Dragon, <laughs> I was not expecting to hear that. Omos okay. found himself in the middle of the enemy. Omos in a bit of a rock and a hard place, but he does manage to get himself out of harm's way as a lot of ultimates have to be burnt. Kantos joins He's him. He's Supporting him out there. There's the ulti onto Zoot, who looks to try and peel himself, but does end up falling on down. Oh, Imogen no. finds one. Finding a second against Susan's online, and this is what we were talking about. <laughs> this is the power of a vein looking to try and unlock the potential that has been hidden away for the best part of 23 minutes now, Carbon. The double kill could have been more. It should have been more with both Olaf and Obo so, so low, at least sub 15%. Instantly, the call is we're going Baron, and why not? They have so much damage. This will be deleted. Imogen, I mean, that was huge. So sick from the uh, from the top vein. 4K behind, completely turns the team fight around. Oh, the jungler is here, yet, though. and he is two levels ahead, which means his smite does about 100 damage more than that of Elliptic. So they're afraid to finish it, but 
Here comes Omo. Vega going to look to try and land that stun. Meanwhile, he needs to commit, but he can't get through the cage. Resistances are going down. There's not even oh. going to get smited. It gets taken by Azira. Meanwhile, Ven actually does get the kill, gets the shutdown, takes out Kane. This is the best case situation right now if you are a Kiwi fan. And now we're back into business. Yeah, and we get a replay of what just happened. Uh, I was questioning why they were holding this top turret so fervently, but Omo just decides to run into the enemy team, gets caught on that stun, and that starts the fight. Zaya is nowhere nearby, and Emogen is able to just wreak havoc. You can see that walking through that tower lost a, a ton of health on the Zaya, and yeah, a sick condemn there. Hits him with the flash condemn. Omo manages to live, which means that the Baron was a little bit spookier, but they weathered it super well. Vega cage means that Omo can't come over the wall because it stops movement. And I mean, with Baron, this split pusher is very scary. It felt to me, reviewing and getting to watch that in a bit of a slow motion, just a big overlap of ultimates, not really finding too much value. Galio basically jumping onto a tree and saying Merry Christmas, but yep. no, wrong season, wrong month. Yes, it is cold, but we're not uh, celebrating just yet. No, Omo just, I don't know, delusions of grandeur. Feeling big and then falling down. And unfortunately, look, mate, you're strong. You have the QSS, but uh, <laughs> you're not 1v5 strong. The only member now still remaining on Yusa to stay flawless. Snuck in here again, hoping to He's catch Olaf. someone picking up that bot wave. You can see them pinging the tower out, but they've seen now that Emogen is in the top lane, so potentially they can look for a flank, but a pink in that bottom side of the jungle. Imogen does have, uh, does have teleport. He's going to look to try and draw as many resources as possible to that top lane. Are we going to see any members start to uh, work their way towards it now? Defensive retreat has actually been pinged out here. Homo's just going to single-handedly work on towards this uh, Ocean Drake. Not going to find the greatest amount of value nowadays. No, the later the game is, the less useless. The more useless, the less useful. Um, but the key here for both teams is how well they can play around the vein. The score and the gold is exactly even. We have a one for sort of scenario where in the 4-1 Emogen absolutely owns the side lane no one can fight him 1v1 anymore um, and he will always have the shove and the ability to rotate first to the team fight however on the Usid side their four are much stronger still and they should still win team fights so it's really about how well the University of Sydney play this game around the vein? Do they, how can they find their team fights where Vane's not there, she's stuck in the side lane versus how well do the Kiwis manage to pull the Aussies around the map in a yep. way that utilizes the fact that Imogen can basically 1v9 as long as the vein doesn't get one shot. Omo looking for a solo kill here. May just find it. Both fact availables having to be used there by Yin Yang. But our attention turns Oriole. to mid lane. Big Oriole as well. Redemption having to come down to top up the members. Fight does sure continue. About this one. Omo not really finding much at this stage. Christmas Tree doesn't lock him in place. The damage from downtown. Celestial Dana powers. Has predated and he's on his way up. He's extremely quick. And Omo may have bitten off a little bit more than he could chew once again. Leptic's looking for it. He wants to be that hit the hero that. Uh, but Sydney needs, but <laughs> maybe he is the one they deserve. I'm lost for words right now in terms of how this game plan starts to really unfold. Here we were, well, maybe in the draft thinking, yeah, okay, showcase it. It didn't Ooh, look good. The yeah, flash is even better. But uh, we're starting to see a little bit of an understanding as to how this can work and execution and nerves, really, I think, is probably the biggest thing to take away from this. How long have we been going now? Five hours? Yeah, yep. And uh, for That's these a guys, a lot of these guys, probably first time playing on stage. It's a long day, you know. It's a lot of water, dr a lot of water drunk. A lot of toilet breaks taken. Have they eaten dinner? You know, it's 7 p.m., I'm pretty sure. 6 p.m. or... Yeah, 7 Fast yeah, approaching 7 p.m. here um, in Sydney. These guys probably haven't eaten since lunch, which was at 1.30, so... 
Fatigue definitely on the cards here. Who's going to last? Who's going to continue to make good decisions when the pressure's on? Yeah, who can beat the uh, the all-important neutral objective, which is the dreaded headache? <laughs> uh, that one gets you. That one never uh. respawns. It just stays around forever. <laughs> no item for that. No, no counterplay for that one. All right. Got Zoot. Now, Images does lane. have the flash. Yeah, but look at this. Instantly forces that flash out. Zoot, he has exhaust and ult, but he knows. He knows. Bane can dive him so easily. Stopwatch. QSS, level 16. Oh, uh, actually, Ori's 17. Actually, this Ori is huge. Ori Ava, is really, this Ori is gigantic. This Ori just needs to go and ult someone. They'll die immediately. Omo, yet again. Solo Mish. Cantos jumps over a wall and says that's not where we are. Flashing in to try and get Kedu under tower. Oh, for Redemption's having to be popped here right now. Looking to use that Bramble Bush to jump out of harm's way. Get back to Olaf. Hang out by the Baron Pit. And Emogen says this works Uranus great for me. stuck in... Uh, hang on. You gotta watch out here, Zoot. Zoot. This is Chance. so scary for Zoot. Zoot can definitely one-shot him. There's no magic resist on the side of Emogen. He just needs to hit him with one Q. Oh, Emogen's got these fancy feet. Definitely been taking Salsa lessons. Okay, he's away from the wall now, so no, so no condemn. That's disgusting, the flash! Ooh. It's beautiful, that's why I called it out, and that is what it can do. Zoot, absolutely just, wow, I'm big, but I can't do much. And now a Baron call. You said just full of solo plays this game. Everybody wants to be the hero, but the real hero will be friendship, guys. The real hero is teamwork, and unfortunately, hang on. Omo in the back line, spots out one, looking to go for Kedu to try and disrupt that. TP coming in though, here comes Emogen. Oh, he's not there just yet. Yin Yang gonna look to try and chuck out as much damage as possible. Christmas trees locked him in place, Olaf is low. Kantos just gets deleted as Emogen rocks up to the party and says this is what a vein can do. Flashing across, doesn't even need to be there. They get the knock up, Elliptic securing the kill. Now, what can we see? We talk about heroes, you mentioned heroes before. You've got an AD carry and you have Omo with a smite. One level up. Yin Yang looking for him again. Beautiful cage. Nowhere for him to go. Has to QSS the stun and oh, there's Kedu. no way he's stealing. He has Kedu to face burns tank. everything. Baron is gone. Kedu, a casualty. Doing his best. And Gets him. Elliptic, obviously very excited. By Drake as a consolation prize. As far as consolation prizes, that is the best one, but I mean, this vein is just absolutely unreal. What can they do? She has no sums now. She's got 5k gold lead over the yeah. uh, over the yawn. This is a, a really tough position to be in. Oriana's still huge, but she's got to make something land. Take me back 15 minutes when we saw a 0-2 vein. We're like, what does this actually do? It's getting camped by a cane. It's just doing nothing. Yep. Kane is yep. just absolutely monstrous, and then a few slip-ups, and Vayne is just like, of little faith. oh hey, hang on a minute, I've got two items now, I've got a Ginsu, so I can actually do stuff, and uh, well, doing stuff is a bit of an understatement with a bounty of 700. Shouts out to uh, NZ Smite in the chat, who actually <laughs> foretold that Baron fight like 15 <laughs> minutes in advance. <laughs> I, don't know, uh, I don't know how he knew, but he did. And Somehow the meme team have found themselves in a winning position. Max items now for the vein top and far out. Yeah. It's still winnable. Don't lose heart. My uh, fellow New South Welshman, Sydney can still win. They, uh, you know, it's nice. She's got a couple items. Oriana is thick to say the least. Mm hmm. We can see a big Oriole. We can see some fancy moves from the Zaya. If Vayne is going to keep up those split it. push, then they need an answer to that. Because when Oriana goes for it, it's dead in the water. Unless the flash is down, which it is right now. Oriana will get that up first. Will be the one that can uh, be proactive when it comes to that one. Baron buff still around. Looking to carry on the siege, splitting it between top and mid, letting bot push organically. 4k gold leads. As Elliptic finds a pick, gets the suppression. <laughs> oh my gosh! Zoot, the powerful pick, the one that had the ability to do everything, can do nothing. A zoning ulti there from Zyra looking to drive out that backline. 
Imogen is legendary, finding oh. one, finding two. Can they find a triple kill? Garden <laughs> Angel is there. It is just so damn easy when you're looking like that, when you're doing damage like this, when you're working your way towards the Nexus. Ye of Little Faith is an understatement, I think, there, Carbon, because this meme team, accidental pick or not, definitely showed some finesse and has definitely just allowed them to claim victory in this best of five. And you can see how happy they are. That is the victory that means the most. The ones that, the one that's done on your terms. They picked the champions that they wanted to play in game five of a very tense series. They've flown all the way over from New Zealand to be here and they made it work. That is one they'll remember. Congratulations to the University of Auckland for being our OUC champions. What a feeling. What an absolute beautiful feeling to come into game number one and win it like that. To then say, well, we are playing on this new patch. You're just going to let us have And a me? comeback too. I mean a comeback too. Of all the things, of all the scripts you could write, you would have it five games, you're the international team, and the last game, you just... Throw everything against you know, the wind. Throw it out and you just say, I'm doing this, I'm playing my champs, and then you win in a comeback like ticks all the boxes it is i don't know that's that's one to remember it's like a beautiful tv series with a finale that you are just so grateful to have witnessed <laughs> that you are so not ruined well yeah not ruined we're not going to be talking about that one but what is not ruined right now is the moment for these guys as they go for the handshakes with their worthy opponents and you know let's talk about sydney for a moment they put up a valiant effort they would go toe for toe the first two games, a bit of a write off in terms of dominant by Auckland, dominant by Sydney. But after that, slowly by slowly, the collaborative efforts became that much closer. And then we started to see some individual finesse where, you know, the likes of Zoot popped off, Imogen mm. started to find a bit yeah. of influence. Yep. And so no, after. Look, I feel like all, all, and commiserations, obviously, to um, UCID, University of Sydney. I think it was an admirable performance today. Yeah. Uh, first game was rough, but. They brought it back. 3-2 is nothing to scoff at. Um, they should be proud of what they did. Yes, losing hurts, but look, you got as close as you can. Um, I feel like both teams warmed up into it over the course of the day. You know, I think um, the play got better the further we went. We got closer games mm -hmm. as well. We also got more creative drafting. So, um, no, it was, a, it was a lot of fun. I'm, I'm stoked to have been a, a part of it. Um, I, I had a great time today. Um, Got some great games. We have five games. What more can you ask for? The script was written and the Kiwi remains supreme once again. Congratulations hey. to your champions on screen. University of Auckland take out the championship. They are the best university team in all of Oceania. And that is it from us today in the studio. Thank you so much for joining us. Be sure to check us out next time. You got OPL, OCS, us here everywhere. You got more League of Legends action. See you next time.